in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed lord we bless you hallelujah lift your hands and just worship him everywhere inside and outside the holy spirit is everywhere lift your hands and say lord we glorify you something is moving something is changing your destiny is moving there's heaven in the earth god is working in the midst of his people by the Holy Ghost, it's not by power, it's not by mind, it's by the agency of the Spirit. Go ahead and hold the hands of your neighbor and begin to pray in tongues, if you will. Come on, pray like a general. Sing in the spirit. Make melodies of victory in the spirit. When you allow the Holy Ghost to take charge of your life, listen, listen. It's one thing to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's another thing to come under his influence. Not only is the Holy Spirit living in you and around you, but he becomes your agency. Bible says, in him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. This is not just the realm of being filled with the Holy Ghost. It's the realm where you come under the influence. And it so happens that whatever spirit you allow yourself to come under its influence, the spirit begins to manifest all that it can do you. So if it's a demon of anger, for instance, the moment you allow yourself to come under its influence, not necessarily with your permission, you will begin to find expression. The Bible says Jesus so aligned to the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit drove him to the wilderness. I'd like you to pray one prayer and say, Holy Spirit, I subject myself to your divine influence. He will lead you to glory. The Holy Spirit is not a demonic spirit. He will lead you to victory beyond your wildest imagination. Participate in the worship inside and outside. For when he finds you, I have found my servant David, and with my holy oil have I anointed him. He will turn your life into a sign and wonder. I'm sure of that. This is a guarantee. Take your place. Take your place. As it were in the cave of Adullam, produce mighty men. Let the least among us be as mighty as David. Mighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
important to pay attention to the progressions, the things that are happening in your spirit. Listen, Paul speaking to Timothy, he told him, he said, meditate on these things. Number one. Number two, he said, give yourself wholly. Commit yourself without reservation. He said to the end that your profiting will not just appear to you alone, but will appear to all. God wants men to see your profiting. God wants men to know that your coming every Friday is not a waste. God wants to prove a point with your life to those who think it is a waste to yield yourself to spiritual things. And he said, here's the secret. Meditate on these things. He said, give yourself holy and he leaves you with a promise he said you're profiting the benefit of what the holy ghost can do in the life of a man the benefit of a transformed mind the benefit of an anointed life will be evident indisputable the bible says that when peter healed the man at the gate beautiful the people wanted to contend but the bible says they could not argue because a notable miracle no table the end of every strife the end of every contention is when there is a performance when there is result i'm not talking about one time result god does not just give you result he gives you the capacity to reproduce it satan notwithstanding this is what authority is authority is the capacity to reign in the day rain in the night rain in the desert rain in the river rain on the mountain is a rule down the midst of your enemies satan notwithstanding i always quote this scripture the bible says how awe inspiring are your ways he said through the greatness of thy power will thy enemies submit themselves to you not through grammar, not through stories, through the greatness. This is why it's important. The Bible says, submit yourself unto God. Then it says, resist the devil and he will flee. It didn't say, first, submit yourself. This is the secret of victory in life. You're manifesting the character of the spirit. You're manifesting the anointing of the spirit. You're manifesting the wisdom of the spirit. They looked at Jesus and said, what wisdom is this? Listen, when the spirit of God takes hold of your life, you will do things that will scare you. You will see no mountain before you. No challenge. When men said it cannot be done, you will shatter barriers and walk as if Satan does not exist. This is the spirit of faith I want you to get. Hallelujah. One minute, lift your hands and pray and say, Lord, I know you can do more with me than you have done so far. Please use me. Do more with me. Pray. Say, Lord, I avail myself. Do more. Do more. I may not be an orator, but do something with me. I may be suffering from complex. But if you can ever do anything with me, I'm available. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone tonight. This is Koinonia. May God bless you. Walk up to 10 people. Give them a spirit-filled hug. Tell them it's good to see you. Look at their faces, please. Make sure you love them. Be genuine about it. Don't tell lies. They know when you are lying. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you. Be seated. It's good to have everyone around. It's always a blessing 
I want to use this opportunity to say thank you, especially to those of you outside. I know what it means. Those inside, can you appreciate those outside? Honestly celebrate them. Hallelujah. It takes a genuine hunger for God for you to come and find out sometimes that there are no seats and you tell yourself, I won't deceive myself. Hallelujah. There are many people who come for meetings and find out there's no seat, there's no nothing. They say, let's go back. And they carry their trouble, their mindsets and go back and remain where they are. It takes a level of desperation. The woman said to herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. She was determined. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good to have everyone around. I bless God for what he's doing in this place. And I hope you have the grace to see and celebrate when you see God doing great things. Not just by clapping, but telling him thank you. I always tell people, if I had the opportunity to receive what some of us are receiving free of charge without paying for it, I assure you, I would have been 10 times better than I am right now. Hallelujah. What some of you are getting at a platter of gold came under tears, blood, fastings, persecutions that you cannot imagine. I hope that you will value it. Hallelujah. The beauty of leadership is that you reduce the journey for others. If it took me 10 years to get to this level, I should shorten your journey to take two years. This is how you multiply your success. That's why we are giving everything without hiding. But the Bible says, do not cast your pearl before swine. We are not asking you to pay for it. We are only asking you to value it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Among the many things that we thank God for doing in our midst, uh, four major things. I call them our core values. And I've preached this for years. It's important to know what you, we want you to become. When you enter a university system, for instance, you are given an idea of what you will become at the end of your program. Hallelujah. In the corporate world, we call it the law of clarity. When you state very clearly the things that you want, you give people a mental picture of what you believe they would become. Hallelujah. And we seek to do four major things in this place. Number one, to communicate the love of Jesus. That everyone who comes out from among us the first thing we want the world to see in your life is not power, it's not healing, it's love that comes with the presence of God. Write it. That's our number one core value. Love. Love. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Not when you are called apostle or prophet. Love. Love is a symbol of God's presence. It's a symbol of maturity in the spirit. Number two, character. What we seek to impart in you is character. Character. Hallelujah. Not only do we want people who have the love of God in them, but men and women who are furnished, like Prof said, character. That's the second core value that we have in this place. Everything we do is around these decisions. Number three, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the place of the anointing. We believe that without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible for you to really be transformed and be equipped and to face the pressures and the challenges of life and establish the kingdom of heaven here in the earth. So the anointing. Number four, excellence. It's our job not just to make anointed and careless and nonchalant people like we have in our society. Anointed men of God who are careless, nonchalant, but we want people who are excellent. Say after me, excellence. It's my heart desire every time I pray for you, I pray these four things. And I say, Lord, put upon your people the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. Where you become so skilled, 
you become so competent and you notice that all the messages that we preach are centered around and honor these core values hallelujah we are not confused about what we want you to become we are not just guessing uh, 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 uh. it's a map are you listening to me we are following a definite blueprint there is a spiritual curriculum we are following if we follow it diligently you will become it at the end this is called vision hallelujah for the bible says write the vision he said what make it plain that's what i'm doing right now i do it all the time so that you know as i'm coming for koinonia i'm not just going to church see it like a school see it like a training ground if someone asks you okay so what are you going to achieve at the end of two or three years or four years if you cannot tell them the end of it you've been wasting your time please go and sleep hallelujah you should know what you will become so that you can expect it and you can track your progress are you listening to me so that when it is raining for instance and you come outside and you have to stand in the rain you say rain you can follow me this principle i'm learning will make this be the last time that this rain will ever fall on me it's better for it to fall on you once than to fall on you forever because of not listening are you listening to me the bible says they know not neither do they understand they said they grope in darkness and as a result the earth is out of course say but have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he said but you shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes and so you must understand that when it comes to hearing the word of god keep the issue of luxury aside hello can you hear me inside and outside keep that issue of is there fan is there ac we believe in excellence but you must realize that you are a general on training are you listening to me and nobody who is trained the Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with activities of civilians. It will cost you. It will cost you your transport. It will cost you tears. I will shout at you. I will rebuke you. You will not like me, but I won't stop until something, hallelujah, comes out of your destiny. Praise the Lord. So core value number one, help me. Number one, this is what we want you to become. Number two, character. Number three, the anointing. We believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Don't just say it's for them. Number four, excellence. Say after me, excellence. Very important. Thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing. We thank you for the gift of vision. And we thank you because we can structurally build people and make them wonders, even like David, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, bring out something to write. Please stop bringing. Can I have this? Buy something like this. Hallelujah. Please buy a very good notebook. That no matter how careless you are, you won't tear it around. So that you can document some of these things. Hallelujah. Many of you are always writing. But when we say write, you just search your pocket and check and bring out one paper. That you wrote list to go to the... You won't... Whatever you do not value, you won't attract to your life. Hallelujah. Whatever you dishonor repels you. Praise God. Write the following words down. Thank you, Jesus. Number one, mediocrity. Write the following words down. One, mediocrity. What does it mean to be a mediocre? It means to be ordinary. It means to be of moderate quality. To be of moderate quality. Another definition. Mediocrity means it's neither good nor bad. It's not spectacular, but it's not wrong anyway. Barely 
adequate. Barely adequate. Common. Inferior. These are the words that describe what it means to live in mediocrity or to be a mediocre. I'll come again because I want you to get it. Hallelujah. You see, let me teach you something. We're going to teach it in the Bible school. It's called homiletics. That's the theological name. The art of preaching. Repent from this jargon kind of preaching that people do. No, 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 no. And people are nodding. You are not getting anything. At the end of it, what did you get? You are not being changed. If that's how your lecturer teaches you, I assure you, you will never graduate. See, the goal of teaching, I'm not preaching. Are you listening to me? To preach means to declare. To teach means to explain. There is a difference. Preaching gives you knowledge. Teaching gives you understanding. The word of God is taught. The gospel is preached. So, for many of you who just go, nah, 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 you're just rapping and ranting. Uh -uh, calm down. Are the people following? If you leave the people more confused, you ended up wasting their time and their destinies. Hallelujah. That's why I'm taking it slowly because I really want you to get this. Have you written the first word? So what does it mean? Ordinary, of moderate quality. Write down the second word. Indifference. Indifference. Those of you outside, the Lord will bless you. I'm seeing you from here and I'm telling you, my, see, I look forward to a big auditorium, mighty auditorium, where there will be light everywhere. And those of you who are doubting will not be there. Oh yes, that's what they told, that's what he told. He said, you will see it, but you will eat of it. When Prof was saying, ah, one of the best institutes, some of you are saying, ah, Really? It's not your fault you're a student when we are done with you we'll kick out that mindset in jesus name so right quickly indifference it means lack of interest please take note of that word we'll be discussing it seriously today lack of interest number two it means lack of concern lack of sympathy lack of interest lack of concern lack of sympathy another word nonchalance i mean another definition of indifference nonchalance nonchalance it's what nigerians call i don't care attitude don't write that don't write that you're a leader don't write that i'm just helping you understand say i'm a leader say it i'm a leader indifference the third word excellence write down this word excellence what does it mean the quality of being unusually good the quality of being unusually good the quality of being unusually good the quality of having superior merit to be of superior merit being exceptional surpassing ordinary standards i like that surpassing ordinary standards that's what it means to be excellent surpassing ordinary standards being extraordinary in other words above the ordinary possessing the highest or finest quality excellence write down the last word change c-h-a-n-g-e change It means to transform or to convert. Change. Change means to transform 
It means to convert. It means to become different or to undergo an alteration. Change means to become different or undergo an alteration. To be altered. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, our discussion tonight is going to be around these four words. And please, I pray with all my heart. And I'm still praying to God as I'm standing here that within these few minutes, I will wrestle something in your mind and shake out anything that is not of God. And if you believe that, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I'm teaching tonight on dominion through excellence. Dominion through excellence. Dominion through excellence. The greatest enemy that I've found in my life and from the word of God, the greatest enemy of excellence is an attitude of indifference. The greatest hindrance, the greatest enemy to a life of excellence is indifference. Hallelujah. And now, look up please everybody. Now you can look up. Let me teach you a while. When you examine the body of Christ, you find out that we covered a bit of that in our full gospel series. You can get the teachings. Very important. But you find out that in the body of Christ, there is an emphasis on what I want to call the spiritual side of life. Hallelujah. Every Sunday, you just stand on the road and you see people moving from place to place. Ask them, where am I going to? Say church. Say for what? Say to worship. What does that mean? I don't know. And they are moving. And so, you have people who are moving from one place to the other. And suddenly, when two people are gisting, when they step into church, they stop talking. They assume, uh, what do we call it now? An attitude. A sacred attitude. And they sit down. And now, the pastor sits down and just discusses and then just gets up and changes his form. And comes up and begins to preach and talk. And everybody just sits down and behaves himself. And then we end the service by sharing the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And everybody resumes to what they want to call what? Their normal lives. Hallelujah. And now the tragedy that has happened in the body of Christ is that. We have taught because of certain revelations like. The favor of God, the sovereignty of God, the mercy of God, um, destiny help us, you know, powerful teachings like this. We have had a lot of emphasis on these teachings and it has really not helped the body in some measures because it has brought people to a point where certain things like competence, Certain things like excellence, certain things like diligence, certain things like determination, certain things like knowledge, study, um, hard work, and so on and so forth is no longer respected. Hallelujah. Why should I be diligent when overnight God can give me houses I did not build? Hallelujah. Why should I be diligent when I can just sit down and I can't speak English? But then I can find myself in, in the television ministry and I can heal the sick. Hallelujah. Why should I be excellent? And you know, the sad thing is this. Let me tell you where that error came from. Many men of God left everything to go into a genuine pursuit for God. Are you listening to me? They cut themselves away from society. The Bible says through desire, Proverbs 18 verse 1, a man having separated himself, he said, he intermeddled with all wisdom and so in the course of the sacrifice to get the anointing 
You hear people talk of 100 days of prayer and fasting, one year, two years, ten years, like Paul in the wilderness of Arabia, and so on and so forth. Now, when ministers get the anointing, listen to me, and then they also have character. When they come up, they find out that, ah, uh -uh, you know, people are coming, there are crowds coming, because people have needs. And if you can meet that need, you become a magnet people will keep coming hallelujah they can criticize you but they will still come hallelujah are you listening to me but then that's not the issue the major issue is that when that begins to happen now the man of god begins to talk and he tells the people i didn't read any book i didn't study anything i didn't learn anything all i did was what i pursued god and i prayed and out of that i built an excellent ministry correct now that's not wrong because that's how he came but then the danger is if he does not contend for higher knowledge in the realm of the spirit he will begin to model a portrait of how he got to the position he was and begin to teach people are you listening to me he begins to tell people look all these books they are jargons just forget about it and now you have a church that is anointed excellent man of God but he's a bad leader are you listening to me wonderful person but you find out that there are all kinds of cases they don't know who keeps the offering in the church the pastor collects 100,000 offering he kept it in his drawer later he came and found 10,000 he said who carried it Because he does not know that there are principles of corporate financing, for instance. And he doesn't see the need for it. Are you listening to me? Now, he knows that people are coming. But he forgets that the people are human beings. Only because they want the anointing so they can stand. He said, let, let them keep standing. If they really want to be blessed. After all, in the days of Ketrin Kuman, people waited from this to this. So, certain principles, listen to me, that can prepare us to contend with our society and the 21st century is not taught and built in people are you listening to me and people have been taught that when you follow certain principles of life and success and achievement and the rest it is you are reducing your spiritual journey so they tell people forget it all that is there is fast and pray i assure you once you can kick away satan your destiny will open now the people go through every deliverance they pray in tongues for years and they find out that this equation is not adding up are you listening to me and tonight i want to help us that there is an aspect of dominion that can only happen through excellence praise the lord dominion through excellence jesus gave us a command what we call the great commission unfortunately the message of the great commission even by many evangelists have been misunderstood because jesus gave us a commandment he said go ye into all the world you can get our teaching conquering cosmos the word there is cosmos the word there is not just two people sitting down who are drinking go into all the social system the strata and the sphere of society I told you that the gospel is not just a message the gospel is a value system are you listening to me the gospel is not just a message it's an ideology it's a value system that seeks to enthrone jesus and his principles and his culture first in your life and across every sphere of influence are you understanding me this is the gospel jesus left when Jesus walked upon the earth, he affected people and society. The reason why our gospel is powerless is because number one, we do not understand the Great Commission. Number two, we do not understand the components that make the Great Commission work. Number three, we, we are not interested to pay the price and make sure that we have those components working in our lives. Say amen. So there is a place for anointing. There is a place for prayer. There is a place for fasting. There is a place for knowledge. There is a place for wisdom. There is a place for excellence. There is a place for character. See, the truths in the Bible were not supposed to substitute one another. They were supposed to complement one another. 
when you begin to substitute one truth with another you are going to land into error the truth of god's word where if it is in the bible it was not meant to substitute another it was meant to complement hallelujah so we have a society that cannot match the challenges that come and the the terrible thing about it listen to me listen to me is that many of our mentors and our fathers and our leaders and our role models have not created a true picture of leadership they have only created a true picture of pastoral ministry are you listening to me so you see someone who god is calling into the area of business behaving like a pastor because that's all he has seen and learned are you listening to me and we tell people that progress in the spirit is when you become a pastor wrong wrong god's idea was not to raise pastors i hope you understand that the fivefold ministry was not god's original agenda it came as a result of the fall of man so he had to give gifts to men ephesians 4 from verse 10 to 12. the bible says when he led captivity captive he gave gifts to men some first apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors and they have an assignment for the equipping of the saints that they the saints will come to a point of maturity and do the work of the ministry what is the work of the ministry the great commission invade cosmos with the value system of heaven there are many christians who are born again but they have not been taught that the message that jesus brought was not a religious message he came with an ideology he came with a value system that means if you embrace jesus and his message and his principles you should become something hallelujah predictable unfortunately what we teach in church is potent enough to raise people from wheelchairs but not potent enough to produce leaders and produce champions and world changers men and women who can take charge of society so we have the church there healing the sick and raising people from crutches wonderful but go to every office you see unbelievers there in the senate unbelievers there and believers are suffering and the kingdom is not truly really advancing motion without progress hallelujah and every time all we know to do is oh satan satan is behind your life if you can get this devil i promise you everything in your life will change i beg to defer that that is not completely true we preach we set people free here but let me tell you the truth sometimes many people call and say ah but they prayed for me and i don't feel those demonic influences but my life has not moved forward because you see it, success is a component of many factors impartation is only one of the components success is an equation with many variables that equal success these things have not been taught in church i told you to write four words we are going to discuss them the most dangerous of all of them is that word called indifference you know what indifference is look up please you know what indifference is indifference is a state of lack of interest and non-challenge there are many people who hear this message right now and just shut down and say this kind of thing i thought we were going to talk on the seven planes of entering the seven dimension in the realm of the spirit hold on hold on because the first shock I need you to know is that those who God is sending you to are not born again. Are you listening to me? They don't speak in tongues. They don't know the Holy Spirit. They do not respect the value system of the kingdom. And so your first interaction with cosmos will not be your praying tongues. Your first interaction will be the spirit of excellence. Write this because I want to challenge you tonight. I really want to challenge you indifference I don't care there are many believers who do not see a need there's no pressure 
to upgrade their lives to move from where they are to where God wants them to be indifference the greatest killer we preach about lust we preach about fornication we preach about all of these things wonderful these things are bad but let me tell you we must also preach about all these other things like indifference do you know that when Jesus challenged the Laodicean church in Revelations, one of his challenge towards them was indifferent. He said, you are neither, was it the Laodicean church? One of the seven churches. He said, you are neither what? Hot nor... How can a man be neither hot nor cold? So you are standing neutral. That state of being neither hot nor cold does not mount pressure in your spirit. You are not extreme in anything. Hallelujah. So if people criticize this side, you can identify with them. If they criticize this side, you can identify with them. And that's the most comfortable position in life. Mediocrity. Indifference. Many of us are here. And when you hear messages like this, you just sit down and be wondering, is he really talking about me or some other people? Indifference. It has killed the church. We have no voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many people today, listen to me, who are unemployed in Nigeria, not because of Satan, because they do not understand the principles that will get them from where they are into a great place. I tell you the truth, many people are not honest because in Nigeria, we love transferring responsibilities. It was not my fault. My stupid father took me to a herbalist. Look at where I am now. What did he do about it? Nothing. So we love it when we transfer responsibility and blame. Hallelujah. We love it when we spiritualize everything and cover for any lapse on our own part. Praise God. This is very, very important. And I get very irritated when I see people not teaching the body of Christ all of the principles that are supposed to equip them the Bible says that the house is a come and I will show you the bride the lamb's wife and he took me and showed me a city and heavenly Jerusalem he said it lied four square the length the breadth and the height were equal in other words there are many components that make a complete Christian and a good preacher and a good leader must be able to expose all the people to all of those components so that there will be holistic building you don't just have prayer warriors who are broke failures in life or anoint or prosperous people who are victims of satan or anointed people who are bad fathers bad mothers You change a mind. You change a man by changing his value systems. His mindset. Hallelujah. That's why wicked men like Adolf Hitler and all these great men, they not only killed people, they sought to introduce new value systems. That's what they call brainwashing. You know what brainwashing is? They give you a new value system that can make you look at your blood mother who gave birth to you and you have another value system that is that does not even have respect for her value system and many of you may not realize we are there clapping and throwing people under the anointing in church and satan is infiltrating everywhere with a value system hallelujah gradually they are kicking anything that looks like God out of schools, out of everything. Are you aware of that? Let me tell you the truth. Those who wanted to do that had that agenda since. But they knew that some of them needed to become authorities in their field. So that they can gain the required influence to carry out that wicked agenda. And for decades they paid the price with that singular vision. Are you listening to me? What you see happening to the world today was a decision that people set and they paid the price for years not in the body of christ 
We just teach people that you get born again, receive the impartation and go. In China today, China has a dream of becoming the world superpower. And let me tell you something, the only person who can stop them is God. Are you listening to me? You go and read the history of China. And they came with certain leaders. And the leaders began to put a new value system in the people. They looked at their statistics and knew that the way Chinese people were giving birth anyhow, very soon, the country was going to have a problem. And they began to come up with measures of birth control using flamboyant advertisement that changed the mindset of people and attracting a lot of people, giving them a lot of things. Hallelujah. And then they started encouraging industrialization among their people. Are you listening to me? They started letting them see how much a Chinese product is better than any other product in the world. And listen, they drafted strategies to put that mindset even in a little Chinese boy. A little Chinese person, although he cannot speak English, he has self-confidence more than a lot of people. A system. Hallelujah. And right now, China produces a lot of things. Many Nigerians run and produce inferior goods and run back into the country because of a country that can believe themselves. And the last time I checked Forbes list of most influential men, President Obama was not number one. Because certain people have an agenda and they are pressing towards it. But when you come to the church, if we listen, listen to me Christians. A great man called Matthew Ashimo Lowo. KICC. When he went to London, he found out that although we were colonized by the British, he saw that there was still that element of racism in the place. And the blacks, a lot of people, some run from Lagos, follow through bridge, follow through everywhere, not by plane or they get to London through all kinds of ways. And they survive there. They catch them. They jail them for six months. After six months, they bring them and they are roaming on the street. And he looked at these people and saw a depraved people that did not believe in themselves. And he says, I will change these people. And he set up his ministry and brought them. He began to teach them certain principles. After a few years, over seven, right now as I speak to you, over 60 to 70 percent of the people in his church own conglomerates and a lot of things the moment that happened the british government started noticing him because they started commanding influence they own the companies they own the banks they own the media and so you cannot have this kind of influence and not meet with the leaders and the kings that influence the minds of the people are you listening to me systemic invasion not just i receive i receive train people teach them give them the mindset build them i guarantee you you will fire them like the foxes that samson set on fire and left them the bible did not say he came to supervise them he just set the foxes on fire two by two and released them and the bible says they devoured the farm of the philistines Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Dominion through excellence. Lots of people do not, we don't care about excellence. It's not your fault. You were not taught. We the leaders who God has anointed have been there trying to look for money, trying to look for fame, trying to look for power, trying to go on air, trying to bring ridiculous projects that God did not send us to do. And we will not concentrate. He said, who are these? He said, what is this that you see? He said, four horns. He said, these horns have risen to judge Judah. He said, but I will send carpenters. 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 What is the work of a carpenter? To construct. And so God sends us as carpenters. And we begin to train men who will judge these horns. The Bible says in Obadiah 21, it says, And saviors shall arise out of Zion and shall judge the Mount of Esau. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If all 
you keep getting every week in koinonia is falling on the floor or hands lay being laid on you i assure you you will hate me in the next 10 years because you will see men who didn't pray like you who didn't fast like you but you are now moving around with cvs praying in tongues for jobs in their own companies are you listening to me that's what we have in church so a lot of believers are confused they cannot understand why a man who does not love God sleeping with ladies all around but he's the one who owns Virgin Atlantic I didn't say that oh it's an example before you, you go and write on newspaper that Joshua Selman said this. no 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 example hallelujah or you find out that every believer we are just praying praying and somebody says hallelujah the Lord showed me that soon we'll have a TV ministry and the man claps he say am I not a prophet shame on him what of the owner of the TV ministry who can kick your program out at any time why not train people and teach them the principles challenge and inspire people release an anointing and release knowledge and understanding in them let somebody rise and own a television station let somebody rise and and put a software that before it works it must say a scripture you must listen to it you should know me by now as you are clapping i hope you are getting it hallelujah now every time we say this thing people just say whoa but i indifference after people say they just say kai this message was very nice what are you doing about it hallelujah i don't see limits in my life i am telling you see this is my mindset i don't see limits you never never will come and find me putting my hand like this and you say why i say kai i'm thinking of i'm always optimistic but i know whom i have been and I am persuaded. I'm persuaded. Look at lots of graduates in Nigeria. They love God. They were presidents of fellowships. But they were only taught the side of the anointing. Now, they go for a job interview. There's nobody to lay hands on. And they have to queue. A long queue. They were not taught principles. How to, how to do a lot of things. They have no character they have they don't understand the principles there are many people who are who get jobs and for years they are not promoted and they get angry because they lack the necessary knowledge to leave the stage where they are and go beyond and they think the remedy is just prayer and they keep praying praying and god leads them to a book and they look they say no no this guy i know him is is not is not a fiery person Let me ask you a question. How has your life been so far? Is there anything that inspires you? There are names that when you call, you call names that are very nice. Look at the sound that we are using. Because of this mic, many people have gotten healed. Many people have gotten blessed. The media is streaming right now. There's Facebook and Twitter. This was somebody who believed himself enough to get up and take influence. Excellence at all times. See, the spirit of excellence is not about money. This is what I want you to get. A lot of people have given excuses as to why their lives are the way they are. They say, if only I had more money. Koinonia, I say you are rich. That's why you can do everything. It's a spirit it's a culture it's an attitude excellence is not just about money it's about a spirit i know many millionaire ministers who are not excellent at all they are anointed they are filled with the holy ghost they are not excellent the quality of being outstanding the quality of being thorough write it thorough many people are not thorough in their lives you are studying a principle you are not thorough we like stopping halfway 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 we don't ask the right questions we don't pay the price to stay long enough we are always in a hurry 
No thoroughness. That's the result. Lack of excellence. Someone wants to learn keyboard. He just learned something small. You start roaming around and telling everybody, I can play. The fact that they are not attending to you is a message. Get angry and go back. Let me tell you something. Excellence defies religion. It defies gender. It defies race and ethnicity. You meet an excellent man. He will break any barrier in life. I was listening to a speech by one brilliant lady, Nigerian lady. Hallelujah. On KICC. And I think she's one of the editors of these great magazines. And when she was speaking, I could, I, I sat down and I felt like a child. I said, Lord, I need to rise beyond this level I am. I am where I am today because of the degree of value I have placed on excellence. If I step higher, I will rise higher than this. There are many preachers. And you know, let me tell you the thing about results and excellence. Every time you keep nonchalance and you don't move forward and someone else is moving forward, you will be angry. When I drive a golf and I bring here, there are many of you who will see, you are happy because it's consoling your present position. But if I step in here with a Lincoln Navigator, people will start talking. Some of you say, ah, me, this kind of shady success, I'm not sure. We always want people to do things that keep us comfortable. The moment they begin to do things that challenge you, you try to find excuses. See, it's not every power you see that you look at all. Forget about these people. Let me tell you something about my life. And I say this with all humility. I pray, I fast. But let me give you a bit of my personal life. Listen, every single day, every single day, I do not sleep until I take out time to study on leadership, on finance, on entrepreneurship. Are you listening to me? Many people just think I'm just standing and God anointed me. Get the anointing and go. Are you listening to me? I don't do that. In my laptop right now, I have Christ Embassy Pastoral Course. The whole series. This is not even something that is given anyhow. I made sure I got it. I'm listening to it. Oga Jordan brought certain books. I ordered it right now. There are four books that I have and I must read at least between now and the next two weeks. Be the Best by Matthew Ashimolo. 10 M's of Money by Matthew Ashimolo. Pastoring Without Tears by Sondia Delaja and the Jesus He Never Knew. These were new books. When he brought John Maxwell's Five Levels of Leadership, I saw it, I bought it. What are you doing to leave the level you are in now and rise to become a world champion? Many of you are waiting. The day my brother rises, he will remember me. And then you'll be angry because your brother will forget you when he gets there. Say this brother self. What is the benefit of an elder brother? Is it not to take some of us? Don't start doing something about your life. We are always waiting for somebody to pick us. When will you start carrying others? Every day. Are you listening to me? In my system right now, I was given Global Leadership Summit for last year, 2012. I have it. And I've been listening to it. Some of the brilliant Christian minds in leadership across the whole world. When I listened to the first one, I put my hand on my head. I got down on my knees. I felt ashamed of myself. I said, Joshua Selma, what have you been doing? I'm sure many of you are surprised now. That's how... That's how you'll be surprised. Me too, I'll be surprised. Them too, they are surprised when they listen to somebody else. Join the flow. Don't stand outside and be criticizing and talking. Because very soon, all you'll see is dust by champions who have passed you. Are you listening to me? What do you think preaching is? Just standing to talk? Do you understand that for you to be a good preacher, there are some things you need to have? The psychology of communication? You need to know a lot of things. What do you think preaching is? Just holding a mic take. And you watch the way people will be sleeping the moment you are talking. 
Say after me, excellence. Very important. I need you to get this. When God told us we're starting Koinonia, we didn't just sit down while we're praying and we're fasting. What happened? We set up different departments and began to run trainings for different people. Most of the people you see today, they were not like that. A true leader does not maintain followers. He raises other leaders. We have a lot of preachers maintaining followers so that they alone will become the superstar because they are intimidated. They need to go and read books and attend courses and trainings. But they won't do it because they've surrounded themselves with mediocres that keep lying to them. Your greatest enemy is the one who encourages you to remain where you are. I don't care who that person is. My father told me something years ago. He said it's better to stay with a wise enemy than a foolish friend. Your friend loves you the way you are. He won't hurt you because he values your relationship. But your enemy will cause you to have to be smarter than him to survive. I refuse to remain where I am. I refuse. There are things I do all the time. Let me hurry up. I have so much, I have so much to share. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following, right? To achieve excellence in life, I will not be small in the name of Jesus Christ. I have found my way out of mediocrity in life. I'm telling you, I found my way. I know it. I've seen the door. I found my way out of average. I found myself out of mediocrity. No competition. I found my way to be the best and be the greatest in life. This is not pride. This is the truth. This is what knowledge does to you. Intimidation is because you do not know your way out. For when you know what you have, and when you see that door that has been set before you, you will rise up like a champion. Oh, I'll never be a failure. This is not a confession. It's the truth. I found my way out of certain things forever. Satan notwithstanding, I will live my life as if Satan does not exist. There are some battles. I wrote a, I read a beautiful book, a gift that Dr. John Akbami gave me. Battles Satan cannot win. Powerful book. There are some battles that Satan has lost before he started. I believe. Hallelujah. Oh, Koinonia will keep rising. No, no. It's, no, this is not the issue of amen. The grace of God is there. And there are principles that have been tested through centuries and decades before Lord Lugard amalgamated Nigeria. It has worked. It won't break. They are irrefutable principles. This is not just the issue of prayer. So long as human beings have two legs and two hands, it will work. Kapakatabala. Thank you, Jesus. This is why I celebrate him all the time. You can stand tall through life and you just look at people and say, just hold on. It's just a matter of time. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me in 2007 i was in port Harcourt. i was taking care of someone in the house where i was staying in the hospital ust the highest floor i was there suddenly i looked outside through the mirror and i was taken in the vision and i saw the international headquarters of eni i opened my mouth I said, is this on earth? I saw 38 flags, different nations of the world. But listen, I would have easily laid down and said, I saw it. I tell you the truth, I would have died without seeing it. Many of you have seen many things from the day you were born. How old are you now? Almost 40. Nothing has changed. Every time you are stuck in life, realize that it's a sign 
that what you know so far has ex is exhausted. Hallelujah. Dr. Lukoya said something one time I was listening and he said something very powerful. He said, that's what Prof said. He said, you need a level of knowledge higher than you were when the problem came to conquer it. Are you listening to me? In other words, if you are in level 8 and you find a problem in level 8, you need knowledge higher than level 8 to ever go in life. There are many people who, members, they get to 100 members and they find out that with all the prayer and fasting, they don't break that 100 member barrier. They remain there. So they just say, that's how God wants it. Or forget to, oh, anytime you see crowd anywhere, look at the man, look at his eyes very well. Only God knows what has happened immediately he's talking somebody will come with an anointing and set up something close to him and you will see the same people who he has been trying and begging see brothers and sisters anytime you are stuck in life don't waste your time criticizing those going ahead your criticism will not stop them join the train and get out of your present predicaments hallelujah Say, I'll never be a failure in life. Say, I'll never be small. Say it. Stop all this false humility. Say it. I refuse to be small in life. I'm telling you. I'm speaking to your spirit. Refuse it. Commit yourself to excellence. Be thorough. Be thorough. Be thorough. Don't leave your life to chance. Be thorough. What gift has God given you? The Bible says, Proverbs 31, verse 31. It says, many daughters have done well. But you, your excellence has brought you above them. It says, many daughters have done well. Many bankers have done well. Many media giants have done well. Many preachers have done well. Many businessmen have done well. It says, but you, excellence them all. See, let me tell you the truth. What you see in Koinonia today was my mindset of yesterday. You wait and see my mindset of today. What you are seeing today is not our mindset of today. This is old wine. I tell you the truth. This is old wine. This was the mindset we were preparing for when we were at the back of chapel. You hold on and see. For death. Let me tell you, God is alert and active watching over his word. He's watching obedient people. When God announced to us that this is a year of supernatural exploit, I knew that it's not enough to just say, thank you, Lord. I began to say, Lord, what are the things I need? It means I need a higher level of information. Oh boy, I wish I had time. All right, very quickly. I really wish I had time. But so, let's just get something. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following. Please make sure you are writing. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number one. When God wants to bring you into a life of excellence, the first thing you need is exposure. Write exposure. Exposure. Let me tell you something about the power of exposure. Look up. If you are not exposed to something higher than what your mind knows, your mind can paint the portrait of a world of mediocrity and leave you there. Hallelujah. I was in secondary school. Our secondary school is not like your own. The one you went to. Where you ate yam and chicken. I never ate chicken in secondary school. Just one, Hanagama. I never ate chicken. Hallelujah. Not once. But, listen, but, we were local champions around our local government. I mean, if we came to do debate with your school, you are, you are gone. Just start crying. Hallelujah. We had a debate with Jake's school. We came and caned them those times. Ah, it was a delightsome experience. Ladies looked at us. They are ladies. We were winning those times. But we remain at that level until we met another school. 
Exposure. Say after me, exposure. God will expose you to something. Listen. Exposure, those three, those three things. Number one, the power of exposure. One, it takes you beyond your present horizon. It shows you that there is something higher than what you have seen. Exposure challenges you. Exposure provokes you. Sometimes, exposure embarrasses you. And these are all tools that God uses to show you that there is a need to step up in life. Hallelujah. Exposure. For instance, you never knew there's one song, um, ah, I didn't know you will answer me this way. Hold on. That's a lovely song. I said that to say this. That I just remember the story. I went for a ministration some years ago and we're just trusting God. It was an awesome opportunity to get to, even if it's 10 people. And it was wonderful. And I went there and the people treated me so well. And then there, it was a youth meeting then, but their, or their prophet or their bishop or something, he said he wanted to have dinner with me. So you know in my mind, what is dinner? What is dinner? What have you been eating as dinner? Two or something or this and that and that. So I went, was smart. When I got there and I, I saw what was there. I, I first didn't know what to do. Because I wanted to behave myself. I preached a powerful message. I didn't want to just disgrace and cancel everything. That I was looking for everything that can keep up my reputation at that point. So I sat down. And I saw things I didn't know what they were. I saw a pack. I didn't know it was milk inside. You, we only know milk in tin. Correct? You are laughing. Which one have you seen? So I didn't know it was liquid milk inside. And I behaved myself. I already made up my mind to be humble. So I was ready to ask questions. I had learned more than what you don't know. Just ask. Don't try to disgrace yourself the more. Ask. So I sat down and uh, I diplomatically cracked a joke and we started talking. And then I sat down there and I knew that I didn't know this thing. So I assumed that I was the only thing I could do was to just behave like I was in the spirit. You know, they won't ask you too many questions. So I was behaving. And I was watching what they were doing. I learned numerous lessons when I was watching. I was seeing everything. I would have fumbled, disgraced myself, disgraced ENI, left a bad reputation. When I saw that thing, what happened? Say after me, exposure. Say it, exposure. I said, Lord, thank you that it happened with just three or four people. When I went back, I sat down on my laptop. I browsed everything about table etiquette, kinds of food, how to behave, courses of meal and everything. Because I'm making way for the blessing. You know, the more you rise, the more you implicate yourself. People expect that you should have done certain homeworks. So they just... Some of you will get somewhere. You enter someone's house. You just see two toilets. You just think it's for you to choose anyone. You don't know what it's for. Don't pretend you didn't have it. Ask questions. Don't just, ah, ah, the type in our house is green. You don't know what it's for. Say after me, exposure. Don't be ashamed. Say exposure. Many of you, when you came into this school, ladies... You know what you used to wrap around yourself. You didn't know that the society was this sensitive. You just wrap everything and put your head around. But with time, you began to study other people. You say, ah, this is not good for me. And what happened? It was a secret exposure. You didn't tell anybody. The first day you cooked, you ate it alone. All your friends were saying, Kai, you tried, oh, this is nice. Everybody left you and your food there. Yeah. 
For some of you from that time till now, you have been living in deceit. May God take you to see somebody's food that will provoke you not to rest till you go for catering. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say after me, exposure. Prepare. Look up, please. I'm teaching you how to adopt the spirit of excellence. You prepare. Sir, let me have this cup. Why did they do this? How many of you know? Don't pretend. How many of you know why this was done? You've never cared to ask? Why did, when did they start doing this? Hallelujah. One day now, you now say you want to be a virtuous lady. They'll say, sister, please come. There are some white people who just came from somewhere. And I hear you attend Koinonia. You, you are a disciplined lady. I mean, all the rest run around. Please help us. Just set the table and make sure you make everything. And you are sweating around. Set the table. Oh, God. The Bible says you are the one who will do it. Now I'm the one who is doing it. Thank you, sir. And you disgrace... You disgrace yourself and your family. Hallelujah. Many of you keep disgracing yourselves and disgracing people. You know why? Shame will never live your life until you adopt the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. You saw that a new design came out. You didn't ask all the questions how they wear it. You went, your money only reached for one part of the dressing. You carried it, wore it, and you were just coming around and smiling, looking at yourself, almost hitting yourself. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. It's not your fault. You came from the village. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You have been lying as if you are living in Ikoi, Lagos. Humble yourself, embrace the exposure, and leave that realm. Leave that realm. They bring something for you. You don't know whether it's rice or it's chicken. And it's just keep quiet. You say, ah, but uh, there's turkey. They say, no, no, it's not turkey, it's, it's fish. You say, ah, I forgot. See me again. Now, you are tongue talking. You are tongue talking. You are anointed. Do you think if I'm a director and I want to employ you, I will employ you to go and disgrace my company? No way. No way. And you say, somebody in your village. Whereas somebody who is not born again, not filled with the Holy Spirit, but pays the price to learn some things. You are going for a job interview. You are, you are dressing as if you are going to watch football. You are seeing everybody dressing smart. And you will just throw, say, the most important thing is the anointing I have. You enter the place, they say, why are you like this? This is how you want to become a staff? Are you aware this is a bank? Or this is an insurance company? You say, yes, I'm aware. You are, you are now getting arrogant because you think you are standing in front of Koinonia. You just imagine that is your church. What is all this now? They've taught you positive confession. You are now shouting The people say, please, this way. Walk out of this place. We don't like this kind of people. Walk out of this place. Hallelujah. Many of you do not want to train yourself. You don't want to build yourself. You have been taught that knowledge is inferior. The most important thing is just the anointing. I'm teaching you today that excellence will take you out of where you are into a world that you have never imagined. Please, let's hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. So you need what? Say, Lord, expose me. It could be an illumination in the world that you have never seen. And God exposes you. It could be a program. It could be whatever that opens you up. Exposure. This is a beautiful design by our decorations department. Appreciate them. Exposure. Because when you become a champion, you will know how to celebrate people. Appreciate them, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. You go for a meeting somewhere, they say, this is a professor. Everybody is clapping you. You are sitting down. 
They'll say, sorry, please, can you? They will lead you outside as if they want to ask you a question and close the door. They are videotaping it. They want to show the world that there is a way. See, listen, it's called the law of protocol. Protocol. Learn these things. Learn it. Learn it. Learn it. Don't say it does not matter. How old are you that you are saying it does not matter? Those who have been practicing it have lived by it. I hope you are receiving something tonight. I hope you are not just laughing. Because me, I'm serious about what I'm saying. It must not be a negative exposure. There are negative exposures. For instance, you see a lady who is a prostitute, dresses one kind. And she comes and you are there seated. And many guys are just coming. You say, all right. So this is what guys want. That's it. You go back. You know how Nigerian films are. The next thing they show, the villager girl just comes out. Say, how do I look? They say, this is it. And then the men begin to come. That's negative exposure. Positive exposure will inspire you. Are you listening to me? It won't kill your destiny. It will inspire you. Many of you are mentoring the lives of people who are not born again. They are not serious. They are not using principles that are consistent with the word of God. You will become like them and you will go to hell at the end. So stop that. Everything we are discussing has to be within the jurisdiction of the principles of the kingdom. So number one, you need exposure. Number two, exposure will create a need in you. To rise higher. And this leads to the next point. Determination. Because of the pain of the embarrassment you had. You will vow a vow. That nobody needs to supervise. You will tell yourself it will never happen again. I was told one day that there are some guys. Young guys are like claiming us in this kind. You know young guys when they see an elderly woman. They like claiming look I'm responsible. I can take care of your daughter. And so the, the car had a problem. And they asked them, the woman was inside and they wanted to jump start it. So the guys were pushing. The woman was tired. She said, ah, you poor young men, sorry, some of you enter and none of them could drive. And they had been behaving as in, we are ready to take care of your daughter. The woman said, confidently, say, please enter and help me, you know, an old woman I've tried. And the guys were sweating there. Oh boy, you shall be drive the other one said, no, you go. If I ask you why can't why can't you drive? You say because a car has not come. That's called mediocrity. Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. Sister, what can you cook? Jollof rice and boiled yam. What else? Nothing else. Who do you want to marry? Pastor. And kill him. And kill him. What if he fasts for seven days? That's what you plan to give him? And the guy has not come. I say, Lord, I'm warning you now. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Stop warning God. Get back. Create exposure. And have a determination to move ahead. You have a restaurant. Nobody has come to eat. You didn't ask why. You went for prayer. Now they prayed for you. Nothing changed. Is the rice that is overnight by 1 p.m. You are still selling yesterday's rice. I will never come and eat in your restaurant. Whether you are a member of Koinonia, it doesn't matter what department you are functioning. I won't come and eat because I have only one body and I need to take care of it. If you are not ready to step up and then we say we are looking for caterers to cook for the ministers. You say I'm available. Available. Music artist. I was listening to a lady today. Top sticks, they call her. Ah, I put my hand on my head. Do you know her? How many of you know her? Yet you see, I'm a drummer. Say, I saw myself in the dream playing drums. Don't just let dreams deceive you. It takes action to bring what you have seen in the realm of the spirit to manifest in this realm. Am I challenging you? I watched this lady. I put my hand on my head. I wanted us to play it. It 
would have challenged you sisters there is no excellent person who is not prosperous and fulfilled because it would defy barriers the same way some people are begging for jobs certain people see i learned a lesson in life i'm still coming back for banks banks i'm coming back for you in the future i applied for a loan in 2008 the banks did this they looked at me looked at me sized me and, and drove me out i said no problem a day will come it will be members of koinonia that will have that bank no, that, that was no koinonia then he and i when they have it i can walk in there's what we call human capital not land you are the capital so i said if i don't have land i will become the capital get knowledge get wisdom become equal to a nation one man pastor tunde bakare was preaching a bank abroad called him and they were begging him they said please collect a loan of 10 million dollars they were begging him he said what for he said please just take it they said because they are afraid of the recession so they are looking for human beings that control influence so that they will collect loans so it can keep the bank stable are you listening to me so people like Adeboya and the rest now if he comes for loan he's equal look at redeem can they make one bank or how many banks so they'll say please papa collect money from us some of us are begging and say give us wait wait uh, you have to present this and that I said no problem it's not your fault I don't have land but I can have what I said I'm coming this is the right thing you will do this thing for this one that you do I'm coming back and I said a day will come on my table will be many offers from banks I said the problem is that we are blessed let me just pray for you is it not increase you want oh it will happen it will happen It will happen. <laughs> knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. I found my way to the top. It will happen. It will happen. A day will come. I will ask. See, some of you one day will sit down. If you take what I'm saying serious. You say, mommy, do you want a bungalow? Matiwashimolo, hog bread in this area. The road you follow to come for Koinonia. He put bread on his head. Buy bread. Buy bread. He was hogging it. Some of our parents were laughing at him. Now, he's a world champion. What takes a man from a bread? He came to Zaria. He has a house. He still has a house there. When he came in, he said they should build the house. And in 30 days, they completed it. Plus polishing. Why wouldn't they build it when the money is there? Some of our parents have been building since 1991. Just four bedroom flat. Till today, we have not completed it. Everybody you thought was stopping the building has died, yet the building has not increased. Now, let's visit that word I wrote change. Change. Help us, Holy Spirit. Change. Remember the word? Let's visit it today. When you are determined to succeed, that means you are determined to change some things about your life. The difference between the rich and the poor is not money. It's their habits, their mindsets. The difference between those that God uses mightily and those who grumble and criticize and scrabble over others is their mindsets. And I want you to live where you are today and rise there's always backbiting there's nothing called front biting backbiting is for those who are far behind who are looking for an excuse for why they are where they are change listen there are a few things i've seen that happen to people every time you hear the word like this i wrote reactions that for on change number one refusal or denial or indifference about your present situation that means why you need to remain there there are many of us when you hear a word like this it will embarrass you it will sting your ego that's what is happening to many of us you are angry you wish you can flog me that's why you are not sitting here and now you are just saying oh god this guy why is he saying this thing now
There are many people who hear messages like this and get angry. They don't know why they are angry. They think they are angry at the man of God. They are not angry at the man of God. It's a reaction that is compelling change. Because when you hear a message like that, it rattles you. And you can either be meek and broken or you can stand and give excuses and say, okay, forget it, Jare. So the first thing people do when they are confronted with change is to refuse it. They try to give excuses. They try to be indifferent and say, well, I've had the time will tell who is right. Me, I'll keep my prayer. I won't let anybody preach any nonsense. Time will tell. You better repent now. You don't need to wait till the future. Just look. Look at two people. One who looks like you and one who looks like what you are preaching. Project them and see what is happening to their lives. Experience. People say is the best teacher, but it must not be your experience. Be wise enough and look at other people. For instance, our family members. I know families that conduct vigils every Thursday and Friday in their house. They wake everybody. Some of your families do that. The moment you see people waking, know that your father is under pressure. Something is wrong. Wake up and come out. We have a problem and you are sleeping there. Come out. And you are praying and you are sleeping. You are saying, Lord, is this really the solution to this problem? Because your father cannot sleep. You will sleep too. Growing up, when my father is annoyed, everybody must partake of that annoyance directly. For something very small like keeping this Bible here. You say, is this where it's supposed to be? You know that the real thing is not the Bible. There's, it's a cumulative of something. You watch your friend on news. You just start getting angry. And see all these people. They now pretend as if they don't know us. The truth is he has forgotten about you. Let me just tell you the truth. Because they don't look back. Leaders look forward. So if you ever want people to remember you, come forward. Many of you are there angry. They don't remember us. Uh -uh. You want them to just turn back like that? So that they will fail and then you say, Hey, I knew it wouldn't last. That's indifference. If it works well, you say, I knew. It's just that I didn't say it. If it fails, you say, Shabi, I, I told you I'd be indifference. <laughs> After you refuse then it leads to anger and embarrassment. That's the second stage. Because right now you are, that anger and embarrassment is a confrontation in your heart. You are knowing, you are knowing right now that this is true. I need to change. So you are either getting angry at the vessel or you are getting angry at your situation. Number three, the moment you finally settle it, that where I am is not good enough. What happens? The third thing is you begin to negotiate for cheap routes so that you escape fast, so that people will not know. Cheap routes. Unfortunately, there are no cheap routes in life. It's only in advertisement. I have one, this thing on my phone. It said marriage instant no dues. So he wrote, he said there's no marriage instant no dues. It's in America they do that. Oh, I love you. You love me. Let's marry. They just get one priest from somewhere. Just comes out from somewhere and just join the people. Two weeks later, you look at them and say, How are you? I'm not doing it again. He doesn't love me. Oh. I don't love you. What, did, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? When your mother was getting married in the village, she knew she was in for it. She was determined to make it work. We are not touching those areas now. Ah, one day we'll talk about it. You've not heard me preach about it for a long time. I went to Delta and when they were picking me for the state conference from my hotel room, the two guys were arguing. They said, sir, want to find out your opinion about marriage. I said, ah, don't start. Because I said, you people don't want to know my opinion. My opinion about many things is always causing trouble. So, a day will come, we'll share that one. Praise God. I'm sure that day, some of you will just stand up and say, just walk away. <laughs> uh, negotiating for cheap alternatives. Cheap alternatives. 
If that does not work, then you come to terms with the fact that change is inevitable. In other words, you cannot hide it. You may cry about it. You may feel embarrassed about it. But you have to change. At that point, it will bring you to a point where you are humble. And you will receive and say, okay, I'm wrong. I need to change. Listen, do you know how hard it is for people to accept change in their lives? Because change means you have to admit that what you know is not enough. That's why humility is the fastest tool to receive change. Once you are humble, you can embrace change. Hallelujah. Have you seen someone in class who bragged about one test? The guy bragged and said, if I don't pass, change my name. And then maybe it's just one question. So you either get 10 over 10 or 0. And they were calling the names of those who are 10 over 10 and his name was not there. And then the guy just sat down. Everybody's looking at him. And the guy is trying to manage multiple pressures, not knowing what to do. And then they say, who can help us solve it? And then the guy wants to quickly stand up and go and solve it. He say, oh, I know the right thing. And when he stands up, he say, no, 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 no. You got zero. Please sit down. They will keep embarrassing you till you come to a point where you say, all right. I am a brilliant student, but I didn't get this right. See, have meekness and humility. It will help you embrace change. Are you listening to me? Meekness and what? Humility. There are people today in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has opened them up to a revelation. But changing it may mean changing the ideology of the ministry. They would rather remain like that than to contend for truth. Is that true? Some of your churches are like that. The founders, the overseers, whoever... God has given them encounters and are saying this gospel you are preaching you need to change it something is wrong and they look at the reputation they have built for decades and say Kai, if I change this thing now it's as good as dying hallelujah or your father beats your mother two of them do and go and they go to church and then a man of God with big mouth like me comes and says there are men in this place. You beat your wife this morning before coming. And he's sitting down. Say, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. And you see your father struggling with change. Battling with change. Doing suddenly like he's sending a text message. Or oh God, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. Just battling. That's why I taught you these virtues last week. I'm sorry. Remember? Please. What else? Thank you. You came for koinonia and you matched somebody. The person says, sister, you matched me. You just turn and look at him and say, is it where they keep Bibles? Why don't you change? Change is very hard. This is what kept, this is what kept Nitel out of the way. If your father works in Nitel, I'm sorry. But this is what took them out. The ability to embrace change will always keep you in season. Hallelujah. Many people have refused to change. And now they are victims. Let's hurry up. Number three. All those things I've said are number two. To achieve excellence in life. One, you need exposure. Two, determination to succeed. That's where we spoke about change. Number three. Set goals. Set goals. On what you want to become like. Set a high standard. If you tell me you want to become excellence, I'll say like who or what. Give me a reference. You must have a reference. A reference is someone or something that have become close or equal to what you want to become like. You must have somebody or somewhere you are looking up to. Set a very high standard. Set a clear standard. I want to be an entrepreneur. What kind? Like who? Call the name of one person who can give us a portrait of what you want to become like. Those in the world know that. Ask them, who is your role model? They just say, Timaya. Ask a small child. I mean, at least they have an idea. You know what that means? Go to their rooms and all you see is Timaya's tapes and everything because they want to follow the principles he followed to get there. Ask believers. You say you are an artist. You say wonderful. So tell me three people that really inspire you that you want to become like. 
Say me, oh, the way I do my things, even me, I'm not sure. We just keep moving. You will never, never become the kind of figure that you are seeing. I assure you. I assure you. Unfortunately, and I must say this now, many pastors have taught people that if I am your pastor or I am your spiritual father, I'm the only one you should listen to. Don't listen to anybody. Don't take anybody. Question, you want to become a media giant. Your pastor is only a preacher. How is he going to mentor you into that? He can guide you. He can instruct you. He can advise you. But you need to find a mentor along the area that God is taking you to. This is the message they don't preach in church. Because people always think, oh, if you are my son or you are my daughter, it means your offering is coming to me alone. Get that junk out of the church. That's what is keeping people where they are. It looks popular, but it did not come from God. It doesn't produce successful people. Hmm. You want to own an airline. Like which one? You don't know. I assure you, you won't arrive. I watched one cartoon growing up called Alice in Wonderland. Fantasies that happen in one Wonderland. That's how many people are living. <laughs> you ask them, they, start, they even close their eyes when they are telling you. You won't get there. Look at me. I want to ask two people randomly. Brother, stand up. You, stand up. What do you want to become in life? Don't shout me. Come and tell me. Don't, don't need to tell everybody none of their business. All right, this is why you are here. May God bless you for your honesty. Are you seeing that? He said an answer that many of you will not have courage to say. Because you sit down and act like you know. How about you, sir? Okay. I want to be a solution. To you. you want to be a solution to the world? Ick. No, no, don't laugh. Hold on, this is a school. You want to be a solution to the world? That's wonderful. What solution? A medical doctor is a solution. A carpenter is a solution. A mechanic is a solution. A banker is a solution. In what area? Biochemistry. In biochemistry. So you want to take that field. God bless you. You see now that what you see what you are receiving in this place, guidance. So go and find a God-fearing biochemist. Are you listening to me? How do you get that? Go and Google it. Christian professional biochemists. Look for them. You find a particular biochemist. He has probably written books. He probably has videos on YouTube. Go to engineering faculty in the night. Pay the price and download it. And start listening. You will get their mindsets. Before you know it, you will rise above ABU. Rise above Zaria. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I've left Nigeria. I, I never will be limited with this environment. Hallelujah. Are you learning something now? So, write it. Find somebody. Say, who do you want to become? Say, an apostle. Like who? What, is it God to, what did God tell you? You are not clear. Go back. Stop going out. Go back to the secret place. There are questions to ask. But you left an incomplete session and you got up and you are running. There are many ministries today. Ask me what every time we hold leadership meetings. Whether ministers meeting. Whether um, um HODs or escorts or whatever the f we discuss it I tell them why this ministry exists in one sentence I can tell you what we are here to do periodically I remind all the leaders we are not existing to do everything there are many preachers go and ask them why did you start your church say so, well an angel appeared it was on the 20 why did you start your church Say the angel told me, he said, now this day I have commissioned. Why did you start your church? Little wonder people are committed in your church. They come and go because there is no definition of vision. They don't know what they are going to become. Why did you start your church? Now you started a prayer group. Even if it started supernaturally, eventually you go and ask God. He said, now Lord, people are coming in this prayer group. Where are we going to? You are just praying with a sister. Praying with a sister. Where are you going to? Do you like her? Are you starting the ministry together? Are you prayer partners? Vision. Define it. we we'll be praying every day. And the sister is saying, so what's the next instruction God is giving? You are saying, let's just keep praying. Where are you going? 
Nobody follows a leader that does not have conviction and where you are going. I assure you. So set goals. Set goals. In the area of finances, there are people that I model their lives. In the area of ministry, there are people I model their lives. In the area of leadership, there are people I plan to be higher. When you go to my place, you see above my television, I put my picture there. People think it's just for entertainment. No, it's prophetic. Because I'm seeing it, I'm saying whatever I see on this television, the hand of God will take me above it. And then you see books there. Some of you, when we get there, it's just dreams you write. Wishes, useless wishes that may never come to pass. The only goal you have is the kind of man you want to marry. That's good, but that's not enough. You even draw the person. His eyelashes must be wide and rich here. Apply that same principle for your life and destiny. Or oh, the brother, she must be this. Me, I won't take anything. Joshua Selman has taught us excellence. I won't take anything. Then you too, you better work to match the excellence you want. There are many brothers here. You want a beautiful sister. Every time you come, you just look at her. Just turn, worship team. You are just looking. You are not organized. You are not well behaved. You are not well cultured. You are not disciplined. You have no vision. You are not doing anything about your life. They say, who do you want? One day you even meet your friend and say, Kai, I've been thinking about something. You better stop thinking. You better stop thinking. Quick! And, and get to what you are doing. Better stop thinking. Don't punish your mind for nothing. Stop thinking. First things first. Stop thinking. Clarity. Say after me, I receive grace to set definite goals for my life. Write a quick assignment you do. Write three Go and look for three people that represent the areas. They must be believers. They must be believers. Three people that give a picture of what you know God wants you to do. Whether in ministry, not very high. Raise your standard high. If you want to own a TV ministry, like which one? For instance, you can say like TBN, like God TV, like KICC, for instance. You say, God has told me this, my hand will count money. There's one song. You see this, my hand, you. Many people even count it. You go count dollars. You would dance that thing and never count any dollar. It's wonderful. Do the motions of the church, motivate yourself. But after that, go and sit down. You didn't even mention Naira, mention dollars. Hallelujah. Set a standard. When I look at ministry, there are people that inspire me. I read their books. It doesn't mean you will receive everything. There will be excesses here and there in their lives. Jump all those things and concentrate on what you can get. Are you listening to me? There are many people whose mindsets in certain areas I don't quite agree with. Stop criticizing. Just get what you can get and go. Hallelujah. Set goals. So that you can know when you set goals, you must begin to put pressure on yourself to achieve those goals. Don't just set blind goals. Set goals. There are ministries that we, as a ministry, I've, I've taught, I carried the heads of department, the ministers, and we went to Koza Abuja. Why? Because I love and I respect their excellence. Do you know it takes a lot of humility to do that? Because I'm not failing in ministry. I know I'm anointed. But you must humble yourself. I'm saying it openly because it's not a thing to hide. There are many ministers that listen to my messages and just stand up and pretend. They, I know it. I see it sometimes in visions. See Celebrate greatness when you enter its presence. 
There are people who bless my life. I don't hide it. And we took all the leaders and we went to Koza. We went in the morning. We sat down there. Our head of department of different departments went to their head of departments and they were learning. Don't ask questions why we are excellent. And this is not, this is old wine. I'm telling you, this is old wine. You wait and see what God is doing. They have adopted principles. For instance, I know that Ilorin and Ibadan is the place of music people. Is that true? Some of you musicians don't even know. You think it's, it's Samaru. That's the problem. Come. He was over at my place today and I was doing discussions with him. It was him that told me about the lady. How many of you like his singing? Ilorin people again. You see that? And I was, I was asking him a question. I said, tell me about the music in Elori. And he said, ah, the people there, most of them like money, 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 but they are excellent. They are competent. I said, ah. I said, tell me more. And I was just listening. He said, tell me more. I said, all right, God bless you. Every time I challenge the decorations department, they don't just bring some of these designs off heart. They sit down and look at certain things. The protocol, almost every department. And if you're a head of department here and you don't have an idea of any ministry that does your department and an idea of a picture, it means you are misleading your people. You do anything you want to do today. You do. Thank God there are ministers there to supervise you. When you are going out, of course, it's our job to bring you back. Question, who inspires you? Yourself. That's why you are still where you are. You are the only one who inspires yourself. You don't have any figure that inspires you. Out of the many mentors in my life, my greatest mentor is Jesus Christ. And I, no, no, no. I know many of you will not. Jesus inspires me. Boy, when I study the Bible, sometimes I just put it on my head. I say, Baba Jesus. I just laugh. I mean, this guy was something else. He inspires me. Who inspires you? Show me the person that inspires you and I'll tell you why you are in your life. For many of us, we are surrounded by people who are failures in life. It doesn't mean you should hate them, but they cannot be your role models. It's out of pity many of us look up to some people. I won't let a failure inspire me. I won't criticize him. I will love him. But I know he will not help me to get where I want to go to. There are many of you who are friends with people who don't inspire you. It's just out of pity. We have been here since secondary school. You want to read. After you read for two hours, you say, I beg, Jare, Jesus is coming soon. You say, not true. Or you just close your book. And you keep getting zeros, 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 zeros. And you'll be wondering, zeros. The best student in your class is reading. You go and sleep and come back and still see the person reading. Because every time he's tired, he sees, did you have that kind of thing in secondary school where you have the best two students when somebody's tired he looks at the person who took first last semester say i'm not going anywhere we must read together provoke one another i'm not teaching you to have a competitive spirit but you must who challenges you i don't mean makes you envious challenges you i taught the worship team one time i told them i said acknowledge those who are better than you hallelujah Acknowledge it. When you look and say, Selena can hold this camera. If I hold this camera and you watch the video, you will stone me. Hallelujah. I wasn't trained to do it. When they were being trained, I was doing something else. So I'm not that competent. So if I come and see Selena and say, well, is it not this simple thing? Mm -mm. Celebrate greatness when you see it. Hallelujah. You will now see these worship people and say, ah, ah. I thought this lady is a new lady. She came, uh -uh. worship team have accepted her. They are trying. No, why didn't they take you? You see, people have this negative, critical spirit. Hallelujah. Why are the protocol people standing and wearing white? Can't they just dress anyhow? Don't communicate your frustrations looking at things around. Calm down, get the word, and change. Let me tell you something. 
95% of people who criticize only criticize because they desire to be in that position that they are criticizing. It's a bad spirit in Nigeria. They've been insulting good luck Jonathan and they've been doing a lot of things. People have been swearing, if we see you, kill. he has been in Meduguri and Yola for the past two days. Nobody did anything. Everybody was shouting, hey, the same people. What are we saying? Who is deceiving who? Four, pay the price for new information. You need new information to rise to a new level. You need new information. What you have is good, but it's not enough. Hear me. You are a book writer. You wrote your book. It's only you and your family members that know. That tells you that your information is insufficient. You launched it in your church. They piled the book for you there. Now you are giving it as donation because nobody will buy it. You were not ready. You just followed one foolish motivation that you cannot explain and wrote books that don't have head and sense. Later on, after two years, you read them and saw nonsense that you wrote. Principles that don't work. They are not even work. The best time to begin to bring people into some things is when you become the epistle of your message. At that point, nobody can contend it. If I tell you that spitting on people's face is bringing miracles, I tell you the truth, if I can prove it, you will be surprised to see how people will believe it. There are many people talking things they cannot prove. I learned this early enough. So I made sure that I'm the guinea pig. There are many things today I'm saying. You people are believing it only because you have seen we have become epistles of some of these things to a measure. Otherwise, you will not believe it. Pay the price for new information. Get books. Get books. The Bible says, buy the truth. Borrow vessels. You may not borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. Get books. Oh God, Jordan is here. There are books outside, I believe. Buy them. Buy books. Study. Go for knowledge. Respect knowledge. Respect knowledge. Intellect is not everything, but I'm telling you, respect the power of a transformed mind. Respect knowledge. Don't criticize it. Respect knowledge. Go for new information. Meet people who know. Humble yourself. Get tapes. Koinonia messages are here. Many of you have been suffering certain things that the solution has been preached in these messages. Listen to it. Again and again. Sit down with books and tapes and challenge yourself that you are going to change your life. Not just sermons. Books by people who have proven track record. Number five, apply these principles diligently. Apply them. The end of every knowledge is application. Whatever you do not apply cannot help you. I'm telling you this. Many of us know so many things, but we refuse to apply them. The most dangerous thing that can happen to a man is to have knowledge without application. There are many people holding all kinds of seminars around Nigeria. Success motivation. And you see the person comes rickety, not motivated, bad, terrible, battered, and he just drops and says, there are three Ds. Determination, dedication, diligence. Look at the person who is talking. Say, you must be determined. This guy is weary already. There were four people who came. He thought hundred people would come. Say, determination, diligence. And the person is already weary. Go back to your secret place. Apply the new information diligently. Number six, be disciplined and consistent in practicing the new principles. Many people lack discipline. It takes discipline to keep practicing these principles. Even if the result is not showing now, you have been tightened. The result is not showing now. You've been reading books that continue 
Continue. Don't stop. Pastor Chris will say, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Let me add to it. Keep doing it. Don't stop doing it. No matter what the, you are praying every day, you are studying your Bible, you are reading books on leadership, you are fine-tuning, you believe that you are going to have one of the biggest catering firm in Nigeria. Now you have certain people who are some of the top caterers. You are following them and you are taking it diligent. You are practicing some principles. It looks like it's not working. Continue. Give yourself wholly to them. I promise you, opportunity will come and your preparation will more than pay for it. Hallelujah. Be consistent. Be disciplined. Many of us are not disciplined. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent prayer life. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent word life. Because sometimes you are tired. Sometimes when is my time to follow materials on leadership and all of these things? I'm tired. I'm really tired physically exhausted i may have spent the whole day counseling but sometimes when i lie down i remember that i have people to lead i think about you and it inspires me i get up sometimes i literally crawl i'm telling you with my knees i put on my laptop i said eyes you can sleep but my head stay awake and i keep following it i just get a drink or something and i force myself listen you must let your body know it's not in control of your destiny Be consistent. Be disciplined. It's your time to study. You are studying a book. Your friend says, come. There's one, there's one uh, powerful program. Or one man of God has come to town. Wonderful. As great as that is. Ask yourself a question. Is the program you are going to, going to help you to achieve your vision? If it will not, you better sit down and continue doing what you are doing. Be consistent. Say, I receive grace to be disciplined. Discipline is doing the same thing, whether the condition is favorable or not. That's discipline. Force yourself. Constrain yourself. My body is already used to me. I can come back from a trip. When I come back from a trip, I know that it's time to do some things. I'm tired and I'm exhausted. I rest though. Don't get me wrong. I have days that I pay that debt, but I pay it at the right time. When I need to do something, my body is not going to stop me. There are many of you, you have slept away your destiny. You have slept away a realm that you would have got it to. You sleep as if it's a demonic attack. The moment you hold the book, you are drowsy. But when you are gisting, when you are lying, have a Number eight. Never give up. Never give up. We are going to pray right now. Never give up. Never. No matter what happens. No matter what happens. Champions are those who survive what others cannot survive. Never give up. Say after me, I will never give up. Never give up. I am imparting this word in someone's spirit tonight. Never give up. Those who succeed in life are those who ride against the odd. Samson's eyes was removed, but he still held on to the pillars. He said it's not too late. I'm speaking to someone tonight. The devil has spoken to you. Hear me, some of you are outside and you've written certain exams and the devil is telling you your life is over. I bring you a prophetic word. Never give up. I don't care what happened. What, what your CGPA is. I, some of you may have made costly mistakes. And you've lost certain things. You were not born again. You slept around. Whatever it is. Never give up. You can always start again. Listen. The problem in life. Is not how fast or slow you are moving. Is that you are not moving at all. That's when it becomes a problem. Because in the ark of Noah. The cheetah entered and the snail too got into the ark. No matter how slow, tell yourself I will continue. 
Job said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait. For if your strength fails you in the day of battle, the Bible says your strength. I've read the story of CEOs of companies. Oh, you cannot imagine what those people have gone through. I've read the story of preachers that have mega churches. You cannot imagine the persecutions that this man survived. There is nothing you are going through in your life that you cannot conquer if you can keep at it. Many, many of our fathers, they would have been successful businessmen today if they did not give up. They started a business together with their friends. On the way, what happened? Maybe the tanker capsized and they lost the foil. And the friend said, I will continue. Now he owns an oil well and your father is coming to beg him and say, hey, Amos, remember. I want to take you out of the life of a beggar and make you a leader and a champion forever. And I curse every pronouncement upon your life. I curse every tongue. I curse everything that we want to stop you from sharing this word tonight and rising into a glorious destiny. I call your spirit into a higher level of grace. I call your spirit into a higher level of glory. I prophesy and I speak according to the measure of grace that God has granted. You will rise from where you are in the name of Jesus. Academically, I call you rise above and beyond this level. Dominion. Listen, there is fulfillment when you embrace a life of excellence. When you refuse to stop where you are. Where you refuse to stop. Many of you may need to go and take some extra courses to prepare you for where God is taking you. Many of you will need to get some books. Go to catering school. Go to media schools. Many of you may need to follow, buy magazines, buy what will help you. Go for knowledge. There's no time to waste. Your generation is waiting. Buy tapes of musicians. Buy tapes of drummers, bass guitarists. Get it. I'm telling you, get it. It will change your life. Stop playing around with your destiny. Get it. I'm telling you this from the depth of my heart. You will never be a failure if you follow these principles. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. And say, I found my way out of mediocrity in life. I found my way. Lift your hands inside and outside. Say, Lord, thank you for your word. I found my way. I'm a champion. My background notwithstanding. My present situation notwithstanding. Pray. Say, I go for knowledge. I go for knowledge. I'm excellent in everything that I do. I'm excellent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need you to understand that we have a vision in this place. The vision is not just to celebrate people inside and outside. The vision is not just to show the excellence of the kingdom. I need you to realize that we have a vision. And that vision is to bring everyone into a place of intimacy where you know the Holy Spirit. Where you understand His voice. And to bring you to a point where you are equipped with the knowledge of the kingdom. The Bible says, He gave unto some, He gave apostles and prophets and teachers, pastors and evangelists. For the equipping of the saints. That they, the saints, will do the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. And so, it's not just for us to jump and shout. You are supposed to become something under this atmosphere. And if after a period of time you do not become it, we have failed. Are you listening to me? It's our goal that everyone understands the system of the kingdom. That's why for us here, your spiritual advancement is not when you become a pastor. That's not the proof that you are growing. It's how much you are growing in intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And you are equipped with the ways of God. The principles of the kingdom. 
I've always said it here. The Bible says he made two great lights. One to rule in the day. And the other to rule in the night. And the Bible says the entrance of thy word giveth light. That light to rule in the day. As the word of God comes, it comes to equip you. So that you will rule and reign. And legislate on behalf of heaven. He said thy kingdom come. Let your governing influence find expression in this fair. And we are these saviors that God is training and raising. We are on a mission. I need you to understand. The mission is bigger than E and I. The mission is bigger than Koinonia. The mission is the kingdom of our father. Hallelujah. And so every time you come, I like you to be sensitive. If all you want to come and do is just come and see friends and hear the next rema and see the manifestation of the spirit as good as that is we will seem to be successful by the ratings of the world that's the rubbish that goes on we rate success in ministry by parameters that are unknown in the realm of the spirit but we are in a time and a season where the quality of men you see let me tell you something leaders do not maintain followers they raise leaders and champions out of people leadership is not about maintaining followers our pride is not that we become gods in this place and have people come pray for me our pride is to see that the least of us become as great as david the glory of the lord is risen upon the glory of the lord is risen Prophesy the glory is the season. The glory of the Lord is the reason upon me. I see the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I see the favor of the Lord. The favor of the Lord is risen upon me. I see the knowledge of the Lord. upon us tonight oh god lord we are tired of religion i pray that this will not just become a ceremony let every flesh be crucified and let christ alone be lifted hallelujah hallelujah god bless you be seated thank you jesus hallelujah praise God once again it's good to see everyone wonderful faces hallelujah before I begin ministering tonight I'd like to invite one good friend he has not told us happy new year Mazi prosper appreciate him please he's coming up to tell the whole house happy new year good to see you Amen. You know, they always talk about um, the shoe. John the Baptist said, Jesus Christ's sandals, he cannot untie. The shoe is putting me inside, I cannot work with it. I have to drop it here also. I want to say a very big thank you and um, Happy New Year to all my house and my friends, my well wishers, my fellowship members. You know, there's one thing I love about him. Anytime I come into Zaria, I have a wedding tomorrow. So I told him I'm coming to fellowship with us. He said, you have to be here. And I want to thank God for all the co-ministers. When I saw them on their suit, it reminded me of the suit I'm going to wear tomorrow. <laughs> That's why I didn't wear my own today. So I'm blessed by your suit. I'm encouraged. In future, I'm going to be wearing this one. <laughs> then before I go, I want to say this. Um, this is um, 
our resumption time, you know, time of resumption, anytime I remember my days in school, it used to be funny. You know, when you resume from school, resume back to school, your pocket is full. I would advise you so your seat in church and carefully invest into your stomach. In the way school resumed, the way people cut things from hostel, it's so amazing. There is strength, there is money. From hostel, you'll be hearing, Granos! <laughs> Granos! Bring me five and four sugar. <laughs> that means money is in the pocket. But when semester begins to reduce, middle time, nobody shout again. Money don't reduce, your voice will reduce. What they'll be hearing is, Granot! <laughs> Granot! Two and one sugar. Then during exam period, when the thing is no more there, the only thing you have is your transport. <laughs> Nobody shout again. What are you hearing? <laughs> <laughs> One, no bring sugar. <laughs> I want to say very big thank you. I love you. Oh, God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's always fun with Marzi Prosper. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't worry, this is the semester and the session that you'll be smiling even during the exam. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mark, let's go to the word of God. I want to salute all the men of God in this place. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much for fellowshipping with us. Great servants of the Lord serving in his vineyard. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I trust that the Lord will cause his word to prosper in our hearts. And I want to challenge you that this is the year and this is the season where you must make up your mind to put the word to practice. Hallelujah. It's not enough to hear the word. It's not enough to hear Rema. The end of every revelation is that you apply it. It must become part of your life. Hallelujah. It must become part of your life. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Are you there? If you are still looking for the book of Mark... We are going to punish you and the punishment is you will listen to all the koinonia messages for last year <laughs> because we shared a lot of scripture so you will keep turning until you are used to the bible how many of you know that when you study the bible there is an intimacy between you and the word that when they say open to the book of this in your mind you have opened there we used to do a program uh when i was in secondary school called sword drill I know some of you don't know it what do you mean you know it how many of you some of you don't know it the only thing you know is well this is a good year i'm your friend let's let's not go into it <laughs> hallelujah mark 16 verse 15 and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature can we read it together one to read go ye into all the world and preach the gospel hallelujah i'm doing a teaching tonight titled conquering cosmos hallelujah conquering cosmos c-o-s-m-o-s -O -S. conquering cosmos And we must understand the system of the world god is equipping us you see the the greatest tragedy in christianity is, is is not that there are unbelievers or people who are not serious with god is that there are so many believers who do not understand the vision of god the agenda of god the heartbeat of god the plan of god many believers think that the ultimate desire of god is just to get souls saved and then prepared for heaven while that is very good that is not enough hallelujah a few others especially the pentecostals and the charismatics go a step further and they believe that all there is to the journey of faith 
is to be filled with the holy spirit hallelujah and then others feel that when you get filled with the holy spirit then you know you're right then you buy a car and wear a nice suit and that's the proof that you're growing in the spirit hallelujah but we've been establishing the fact that god has a need say after me god has a need and god has an agenda we did not just appear in space hallelujah just escorting people and can i tell you something right now that we are in the generation of rediscovery everybody we are rediscovering our talents we are rediscovering purpose we are rediscovering the giant in us the lion in us the beast in us for other people the antichrist in them everybody is rediscovering all kinds of things that is locked up inside them hallelujah we need to realize that purpose is useless until the kingdom is understood are you following me the concept of purpose the concept of destiny is useless until there is a correct understanding of the kingdom of god how that the kingdom of god is not just a religion it's not a movement jesus didn't come as one of the movement or one of the founders of a movement he gave us a system a kingdom of god hallelujah and so mark 15 says and he said unto them go ye into all the world the word there is cosmos the greek word is cosmos now cosmos talks about two things number one cosmos talks about the social environment talks about the people cosmos are you following me now it talks about the people humanity the inhabitants upon the earth number two cosmos talks about a system a system of government a system of rulership a system of uh, a system that shapes the mind it controls the mind and the ideologies of people are you following me now and so cosmos doesn't just talk about the people it talks about both the people the social environment and the system that shapes their mind there is a system that is existing in our world today that informs the way we behave are you following me now informs the way we talk informs our priorities and our passions years ago the things that we uphold today as priorities were not priorities is that correct years ago there was no gsm right now if your phone gets missing you almost feel like dying you were alive and doing well without the phone so there are certain systems it's an order that seems to have control it governs the mindset of people and territories and jesus said go into cosmos both the people and the systems and do something it says go into all the world and preach the gospel now can i tell you something i believe in soul winning ministry of great men billy graham reinhard bonke but evangelism as we know it is only part of the gospel that's not all the gospel are you listening to me the gospel is is a value system are you listening to me it's an ideology it's a mindset it's a value system that seeks to enthrone jesus as lord are you following me now when we talk about the gospel good news a value system a mindset a state of being an understanding an alignment of your mind and your spirit that brings you to a position where you understand government and authority where christ is lord are you following me now not many people have taught this in church we graduate people from bible colleges they learn about prosperity they learn about marriage they learn about ministry ethics but they do not learn about the culture the life the value the gospel of the kingdom we preach different kinds of gospels but jesus came with a single gospel he called it the gospel of the kingdom the word kingdom refers to every environment and atmosphere where the governing influence the life the culture the values of the king is enforced and permitted to find expression so when we talk about the gospel of the kingdom 
we are not just talking about repenting and coming to Jesus alone that's wonderful but that's just the initial step if we stop there we will rob the church of standing in partnership with the Holy Spirit to fulfill the agenda of God and so you must understand that the gospel does not just seek to transform your spirit are you listening to me to deliver you from hell and eternal judgment no after that then Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says I beseech ye brethren by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and acceptable unto God he says which is your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says and do not be conformed to this aeon this world this age the thinking pattern that is found in cosmos do not be conformed he said but be transformed be metamorphosed how by the renewal of your mind and first peter chapter 1 verse 9 calls that the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul are you following me now so the gospel is supposed to affect your spirit your soul and your body there's supposed to be an alignment and an understanding for many people our concept of christianity and the gospel is that we come to a point where we become men of god so the day you get born again your vision your goal your pursuit is to get so big that your pastor just calls you and says okay now i see that you are a threat to me in this ministry so go and open a branch and have a nice day and for us that's what we call kingdom advancement it's important that the body of christ comes into an understanding of the system that jesus left with us are you following me now for if we do not come into that understanding we will keep doing what we have been doing and the world will never recognize that jesus christ is lord the average christian does not understand what there is more to our christianity so when you get born again and filled with the holy spirit we are so idle we don't know what to do so someone just turns and looks at a beautiful lady and says, well let's let's get married at least let's keep the journey going somebody else says okay let's get prosperity somebody else says let's open a church or let's open an outreach or an orphanage ladies orphanage or let's open something else but i need you to understand that the kingdom is not haphazard are you listening to me god is not scratching his head thinking okay so what next will we do no the kingdom of god is a structure that has been put in order are you realizing this and so we must come to the understanding of the structure of the kingdom and how we are to function in it and only when let me tell you something what you are seeing right now is a revival that is in place are you listening to me because many believers have taught that christianity has nothing to do with business politics media and all of this and so we just feel that all there is to christianity is come to church sing join choir so when we talk of serving the lord what preachers have taught people is serving in my church that's what they call serving the lord are you following me now so they have put a church and ministry mindset in people and so they believe they are serving god when they are serving in church and we frown at them when they say they have left our church or they have left something we just feel you are wasting you are not serving the kingdom we must grow the body of christ out of a church and a ministry mentality to begin to think of the entire span of the kingdom of our father so that our success and accomplishment is not how eni is doing well is how the body of christ universal is faring are you following me now and so it says go into cosmos and preach the gospel put in them both the people and the systems a mindset and an ideology that brings everybody to the obedience of christ where they realize that christ is king where his values becomes the value of that system are you listening to me many people complicate the message of the gospel if jesus intended for everyone to obey the gospel then it had to be simple enough i don't need a concordance to understand the gospel i may stretch to understand god but how does the person in the village ever come into alignment with kingdom realities the gospel is simple it's an ideology it's a set of values every time you are employed in a company 
the first thing they do is an orientation even if you entered with first class is that correct and they attempt to put in you the modus operandi and the value of that company and they tell you we don't come late you come late twice you collect your last salary outside the gate and don't come here again i follow me now and they tell you when you are here you dress in a certain manner you smile at your clients whether you are tired or hungry this is the modus operandi are you following me now the degree to which you align yourself with the values of that company is how much you will be promoted and lifted are you following me now now we understand this in the educational and the secular world but not in christianity the average christian is envisioning when he will become a pastor and have a flock of one million people and all we end up doing is just receiving and prophesying to people with no knowledge whatsoever of the program and the agenda of god and so we keep having beggars lining up day and night without growth and every time you see anybody doing anything the day you see him writing a rap you just look at him and say you're rapping as a christian and now the person is confused starting standing in the middle of nowhere not i every time i sit i sense an inspiration and then you run to the man of god and say what is this inspiration for says demonic kill it now go and carry your bible and what we have ended up doing is growing a crippled church that do not understand the program and the agenda of god we speak in tongues but we do not know to what end we are praying in tongues we cry and we preach about prosperity and kingdom wealth and many people have become an embarrassment for the kingdom because they do not even know the purpose of prosperity we preach about marriage and relationship to what end if we are to be relevant in this generation and if we are to fulfill the agenda of the father then it's paramount that we understand that we are living in a system say after me a system so you see that you really are not a i don't care how many times you come for altar call listen listen let me correct something right now i don't care how many times you come out for altar call you truly are not a christian if you have not imbibed the value system of the kingdom to the point that jesus can be lord of your life can i tell you something there are two conditions to go to heaven write it one is that jesus is savior of your life let me tell you what it means to be savior to be savior means that you have accepted the finished work of christ on the cross are you listening to me that you believe that he died for you and you died in him are you listening to me but that's not enough look up it's not enough for jesus to just be savior he must be lord of your life can i tell you something jesus being lord of your life is not by faith why do you call me lord lord and will not do your doing is what validates that he is lord so when you say jesus is savior he says yes that's true when he say lord you are lord he says i'm watching i'm watching prove to me that i am lord by showing me how much you value me how much of my life is priority to you are you following me now there are many believers that do not have a priority if the things of the spirit are still a burden to you jesus is not yet lord hallelujah are you listening to me this is very important we have a generation of people who know jesus as savior and so you, we can do anything bribe in the name of jesus no fear of the lord go that's the command into cosmos and let me tell you something a true apostolic ministry i've said it a true apostolic ministry does not just seek to transform people are you listening to me you change people and influence systems this is the part of the church that the church has been so uninterested we do not think about the people beyond the church boundaries and so we have many superstars in church and the world does not even recognize our impact until we begin to step out and legislate as ambassadors of the kingdom then we are not going to be able to affect our world say amen, amen. and and there's no point talking about great grace and glory if we do not understand our mission in the kingdom so cosmos talks of what what is cosmos talks of the social system say after me the social system
now i need you to understand that there is a tragedy on earth believers wake up there is a tragedy on earth what is a tragedy there is a system that's what we call the world system that's what we call babylon it started when cain built a city out of rebellion the bible says cain departed from the presence of god and there he built a city naming it after his son enoch and from that city activities were carried out without the supervision of the spirit christ was no longer king over that building i follow me and everywhere god begins to build zion satan also begins to build his city there is always a conflict of the city of our god the zion of our god and the world system the same thing happened in genesis 11 nimrod wanting to build babel can i tell you something the world is attempting to rebuild the tower of babel again and can i tell you who the workers are guess guess who the workers are many of us we are actively helping to build babel he said go to come and let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves and there is a spiritual rebuilding of the tower of babel and the church does not understand because we have not trained people to understand the kingdom as a system we only see it as a religion that has to do with members coming to receive from pastors and then that's all but god is helping us and building us and equipping us to understand his system and how to rule and reign in this life there's no point talking about anointing and power and miracles and all of these things if we do not understand the system hallelujah do you realize that every day your mind is being influenced by something are you listening to me every day five minutes on air someone will influence millions of people immediately I was having a haircut and they were playing a very rubbish song and i saw one small boy he just stepped down from the chair and this boy was just dancing he was dancing and singing the song and do you know this boy there was no time when this boy sat down to cram that song do you realize that the things we know we almost don't take our time to learn it because in our environment are things that have been orchestrated to shape our minds and our ideologies are you following me now and many believers do not realize that these are mind control systems they control the way we behave to one another there are a few people empowered by satan who represent the government of darkness and according to the leadership of satan these people have mastered the art of creating gadgets creating everything that shapes the mind and the thinking pattern of people are you following me now someone sat down and developed the whole blackberry thing right now people will hit their head on the wall trying to ping one another you're just pinging pinging and you hit yourself and say oh right now you see people moving now i'm not saying these things are bad are you following me now i'm not saying they're bad i'm just telling you what is happening in the world you see somebody looks like a robot with wires all over his body this is for earphone this is for answering calls this is for picking this and wires all over and there's a spare one in case that one and pocket full of batteries and we're moving the system is shaping us shaping us to become what we are not aware of are you listening to me the system defines what we know defines our dress culture the system defines our vocabulary when they need the whole world to begin to speak a particular language all that they do is to find those who are influential why don't they invite you to advertise products do you know why it's not because you are not fine they need more than beauty they need what we call influence say after me influence and so what does um what does beckham have to do with indomie or something and you see they carry indomie and they draw football on it for how does that affect your eating indomie they they are listen 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 this is very important i need you to understand our text says go into all the world 
are you following me now and every time they want to ask call children outside and tell them who is your role model they will never mention one believer hallelujah it's amazing how you can exert enormous influence upon people and when we talk about the concept of kingdom influence in the church many people frown we call it carnality yet day and night do you realize that the influence of the world is so strong right now in many ministries they vote for the sermons that they preach on sunday so the pastor displays different sermons on their websites and then every member without discernment without everything just logs in and if for any reason uh, right now we do not understand the concept of price and process these are not languages that are they are, are friendly we have seeker friendly people friendly ministries once there's no ac people get angry you know why you didn't learn it because you see the thing is how many times do they give us light in nigeria for us to learn these things and so they began to on your phone it doesn't die easily and so all kinds of things there is a shaping and if church if we do not realize it we will become what we are not aware of one day you wake up to find out that your son is not what you gave birth to again hallelujah i wonder what the slang will now be after five years do you realize that the worldly songs that are written right now they are so spiritual they make no sense to you when you listen to them physically they use words that are not even in the lingua franca again in your english language hallelujah they write songs you don't understand because they know that you love them they encapsulate those songs with melodies that are from the realm of the spirit so that your spirit is drawn to them and you keep confessing those words we do not realize that these are mind control systems are you following me tonight many parents are influenced so right now there are certain parameters that must be in place if a man is 50 years old otherwise he will not fit into his environment and so we see our father suffering for nothing this guy is trying to build the third house everybody is dying in the house and he's strangling everybody because there is a system that has controlled his mind it used to be for young people but right now it's everybody are you listening to me mind control system there is a particular slang and language that if you cannot use in another community you do not belong so many of us force ourselves we browse day and night through our phone to learn the current lingua franca and we call it acclimatizing ourselves to babylon do you see how we are helping ourselves to rebuild the tower of babel that rebellious city so the gospel is not just preaching to get men born again are you listening to me the gospel is a mindset a value system that separates you from the world system and brings you to a point where from your life and your activity you demonstrate the lordship of jesus christ mazi prosper is here there's the entertainment industry you can ask him and he'll tell you when he started how many churches insulted you how many churches call you an unserious person can i tell you something our concept of ministry must change our concept of ministry has been a man of god wearing suit and then you come and sit down and then a lady gives you water and someone will be admiring me here and say hey god this guy is enjoying you see that's our concept of ministry that's our concept of ministry and so all our goal and our prayer when we pray in tongues that's the picture we see and then the moment you get little honor you call one lady and say have you not seen what they are doing that's why we seek to give an orientation that this is not the definition of success are you listening to me the bible says that the fivefold will train the body that they will do the work of the ministry so when jesus says go into all the world where did he say systems the education as a system banking and finance as a system are you listening to me music 
art and culture because there are so many people that sense that the lord is calling them into the fashions ministry and the moment they come we men of god stand with our lack of ignorance and lack of understanding and alignment to kingdom things and we just kill them like eli when they are hearing the voice when god is calling samuel we will tell samuel to go back and sleep hallelujah Forbes Forbes 100 richest people none of them as I know is a Christian who publicly acknowledges the Lordship of God how do you like that now don't say it doesn't matter because they are affecting our economy and they will cripple us to a point that we must abide by their terms do you realize that there are many companies that we seek to work in we do not know the values of these companies we are suffering and trying to work for them and as we are working for them guess what they are doing with your money guess they are funding all kinds of things from terrorism to prostitution to doing there are so many companies in this country that are the forefront of women trafficking and all kinds of things and all we are thinking about because we will not give ear to understanding god's economic system and coming to a place of kingdom influence all we are concerned is to get your eighty thousand a month and every time a voice rises to talk satan begins to wire the minds of the people to think all we're talking about is just prosperity and goodness and me and my wife and children no are you following me tonight is, is god doing something to your mindset if we don't take charge a time do you realize that in this country right now and the ambassador came over and he was just talking to me do you realize that glow and all of these companies if you want to do an advert or you want to work with them the moment you mention jesus you are out true or false come on answer me true or false most of the television programs that are held now there are lots of people who have written songs and have dramas and plays and things that will glorify jesus christ but the moment you bring it what happens people just kill it they tell you at most just say divine divine is okay at least everybody knows it's not of this realm and now a lot of people are saying it doesn't matter and while you're sitting down god is raising in you to be a media mogul you see yourself in dreams owning tv stations and the moment you want to move people tell you just read just calm down it's okay to marry a pastor 20 members and move on what do we think was you what was god's idea when jesus came and died what was in his mind many of us will get to heaven and i pray it doesn't happen but that we get to heaven and see how much we contributed in the advancement of satan's kingdom are you following me now and then when believers open universities we have a lot of christians who are talking and speaking nonsense and saying ah these men of god they are establishing universities for their personal gains are you not seeing what is happening in our university systems where students are not even interested in reading again everybody just wants to go just go sleep with the lecturer do go get out get out of the university when a student comes in as he's holding his admission letter he's already imagining himself at the convocation square how you get there is none of your business i just want to get out someone who has not held his first lecture is already crying and saying i want because they understand that this is a pattern that has been put in the system to define success and so they just want to pass through it and they will do anything to get to it and there are many believers who are preaching who are jumping right here while unbelievers are designing curriculums do you realize that there are very few believers that are writing books the textbooks that we use in our classes that educate us for six years you sit down under a mindset that has no honor for the kingdom and at the end of it you receive your certificate but you are 60 percent babylon and 40 percent zion and it's with that mindset you step in that mindset will choke the faith that you have such that when you come out what you used to esteem as faith becomes foolishness the moment you step out 
there are certain things we all know and we i mean when someone starts working we are under pressure so much pressure the moment you start working you earn two hundred thousand. people start telling you please will you get a car buy a car your parents begin to mount pressure on you they say what is left you are working don't bring shame to us it's a system are you listening to me and we are that generation that will begin to question the things that have been the status quo are you listening to me i am provoking you to begin to question the things that have informed your mind because there are many of us who are falling down the ditch we inherited something from a true leader provokes you to begin to consider the foundation of the things that have informed your value system because at the rate at which we are going jesus christ is being strangled in every strata they want to strangle him until he comes out let me tell you how they are doing it look up right now the world is promoting associations and things that bring men to a neutral ground are you listening to me that's why football is being promoted in football nobody fights not on account of religion not anything i follow me now right now when a child is um a child has a right to leave his parents and even disown them in america i hope you know that and we're embracing it nicely another thing is what we call the credit system in our economy what a foolish and ungodly economic system let me tell you what the credit system is buy everything on credit look fine on credit buy a big house on credit and leave that's really what we call generational causes because right now there are many flamboyant people that we admire and many nigerians are walking lying claiming they marry you bring your sister and say say you are my wife oh let's get this green visa say you are my wife you go out if you say you are not this and we drive people and we name all kinds of things one man married to 50 people because he wants to get visa and we are running to america do you know the disaster that is happening in america america is the country with the most debt in the world has about one i think 1.7 or 170 trillion us dollars they are leaving it for their the children the foolish children who don't go to schools again they are not doing anything the average child gets up and the next thing he knows is computer game in that computer game there is shooting and right now they do it 3d so that the child will be exposed to blood and violence and while the child sits down the next thing he looks at his younger brother and his mind has been controlled he flies from the younger brother and punches him when blood comes out he laughs because that's what has been trained in our children as a definition of a macho man welcome believers we are entering a truly new age and can i tell you something if we do not i hope you know our parents will die or leave us when this mindset matures it will be your turn you will be a glad father of three or five or ten children as you wish but let me tell you something there is a real system and it's important that we train our minds otherwise there is disaster on the way to happen hallelujah an average child grows and you see the child ask children what toy do you want me to buy for you what's the first thing they'll say who taught them who taught them and right now they've made it in such a way that when you shoot at least something comes out and the child gets happy he comes to look at you and just pours water on your face and is laughing he's envisioning the day you hold the real one at 13 years there is a gang prepared by babylon that this child steps into do you realize the disaster that is happening believers wake up this is not about e and i this is about a matter of urgency this is what is in the heart of the father there is a need not only and those who have even thought about the kingdom all we teach is overcoming that means run away do you know where are you going to run to the bible says we are in the world jesus prayed a prayer for you if you do not know let me tell you the prayer jesus prayed for you he said father i pray that you don't bring them out of that system preserve them you are not going anywhere jesus has prayed for you already and the father has answered it it's in john 17 it's a prayer that had been answered before you were born you're not so running away in a sense of fleeing are you going to stop watching tv there are almost no decent films for you to entertain yourself with right now cartoons that used to be very enlightening right now cartoons are demonic you initiate your child your child looks at you 
wakes up you are sleeping and you wake up and you see your child holding a shoe and wants to hit your head he's trying to children are not good listeners but they are good imitators and so those graphic images have been so much a child that is two or three or four sits down on a laptop and all the pornographic sites have been paid for they are free and you want to download a message and they tell you for 25 dollars you know that's a christian website <laughs> Am I challenging you? Yes, Many believers do not know this. Can I tell you? Satan has crippled our minds so that we do not understand the kingdom or we are not interested in it. Whether you are interested in it or not, I bring you good news. It's coming. There is a rebuilding of the Tower of Babel. And if saviors do not rise out of Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, there will be catastrophe in the years that are coming. The Antichrist is not just a person. The Antichrist is a system. There is a figure who will head that system. But there is a system and is at work right now. Hallelujah. You want to market granite oil. You are putting a lady who is half naked. The granite oil is a lady. Now for heaven's sake, how does granite... Right now, you want to work in the bank. You are not pretty, you are not getting a job. I hope you know that graduate with first class keep your first class once you're not pretty and you're looking nice they look at you they don't hide it they examine you are you going to bring profit to the bank or not i've had the privilege to talk to a few bankers and some of the people you smile at as marketers are trading their eternal destiny for eighty-five thousand naira. there is shame on the church and we must arise we are here boasting of our cars boasting of many branches we are opening and we are not making any effect because we are not going into the world and so we are talking about a takeover generation this is why we need the anointing if we are talking of a year of great grace and glory we must not just run away from the system because the system will come and meet us the bible says a time will come when men will tell the mountain fall on us and the mountain will say i'm not falling anything so how many of us are interested in what i'm sharing this night the, if you are not interested just pray to die quickly but if you are going to live in this nigeria it's happening faster how how about having someone who will receive the spirit of bezalel and design a computer that the logo is the cross how about somebody designing an operating system that when you switch it on it says for god so love the world everybody must buy it it's, it's configured in the software you can't change it aren't you realizing the things that are happening and our concept of christianity is ba 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 and a few superstars touch a few people we fall down and the world is laughing when the owner of mtv was asked a question i'm provoking you he said we hear that you influence the mind of children from age 7 to 15 he laughed he said we don't influence them we own them let me tell you the implication i know you are 30 years old but the problem is this by the time those you do you know those children are growing and god is speaking to you and saying a school and you are saying no a church that's my concept of ministry god is saying a school that you offer additional one of the visions of e and i will look forward to times when we will have a primary school who have schools and part of the programs who introduce to the curriculum who introduce a program called koinonia and spiritual growth every child must offer it that you teach your child you hold ten thousand and give him one thousand and say son every time you get money according to the economy of heaven you tithe watch me do it as a father and you say put your own and the child does it do you realize that there is need to invade the minds if you forget about invading the minds of the people you have not changed them i don't care how many times they fall and stand up you must invade their minds you are glorious so glorious in your ways this is what we call the new revival the revival is not going to happen like many people think there are many men of god who will be shocked at the revival that is coming 
because let me tell you who are the revivalists the revivalists will no longer be those who are boasting and making themselves god on stage that you must come and answer to them to get the counsel of the spirit sorry for them god is navigating another path he is raising men who he will equip by the spirit you see our concept of preaching is going to change that you are god will send you to the system mazi is here he has entered certain places are you following me now and everywhere as he's preaching he is where he is today on account of the kingdom if we were only to compromise many television channels will carry him pick him and use him but on account of the kingdom he has made up his mind that he will live by the value of the kingdom do you realize that if an influential man says god bless you that's enough to bring more salvations than one evangelistic meeting imagine michael jackson just saying i love god not even the lord not even jesus just i love god so god wants to give you a company that before you start you gather everybody and say let's lift up our voice and bless the one who made it possible for us today it is your company whoever is not interested can find one. when he goes out and darkness covers the earth he will come back And God, this is the real revival. Saviors shall come out of Zion and they shall judge the mount of Esau. Are you prepared for the things that God is doing? This is a time where you sense a prophetic call upon your life. You know that you are walking strongly in the prophetic. But every time you look at the boutique and you think of suit, God will say, no way. I'm sending you to the navy and i say lord navy with the prophetic grace god said that's none of your business the mission is follow me just go and then we'll need more people more prophets and apostles in the police so that when there are terrorists hiding by prophetic insight you get up and call them. listen listen this is god's strategy for invading the world system there are some messages that are attacked strongly by the forces of darkness god is raising many of us let me tell you something the way i'm dressed like this there are certain circles in this world that will not receive me they'll say just go out and so god will say all right no problem gentlemen come and god gives you an understanding and gives you a value system you see that's why all this quarrel that we are doing and shouting in church and trivializing a lot of things is because we do not understand the agenda of god and so god causes you to be a millionaire hallelujah and when god causes you to be a millionaire what happens because it's, it's part of the life of the poor to beg when they come without invitation you have people and you begin to teach them the things of god cecilia Hebrew during her thanksgiving had a number of unbelievers coming they didn't come because they love god they they came because they need her can you make yourself so competent that the world must need you and then you can give them your terms hallelujah when you're walking somewhere you you suffer in school you study for years with all the strike the moment you graduate and they are giving jobs they just call and the manager says he wants to see you privately and he says sir i fear the lord he says so what are you doing in my office go to church and he says sir i'm, I'm serious i fear the lord but because we are desperate i see a mystery servants are on horses while sons princes walk afoot and the man says if you're interested in your job this is the part of the story we don't say when we're giving thanksgiving testimony in church come and join me sing hallelujah jehovah Jireh has done me well and then everybody dances praise the lord i graduated with third class and without interview i got a job calm down tell us the whole story what happened if it's the favor of god let's know it's the favor of god i can tell you there are many people who have compromised the values of the kingdom and we men of god cannot speak because they are bringing tithe to us so if you speak they will stop bringing the tithe no more suit 
because we have trained ourselves to depend on the sheep that we have been called to save for our prosperity and would not run to him i would lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help conquering cosmos there is a system that is antichrist and so everyone must come to a point where jesus is lord of your life and that everywhere you are he is because you have one passion you have one mission you have one goal there are many of us right now who can start different pages on facebook that glorify jesus christ i remember one time a gentleman sent one very nasty message on facebook and i saw a jimmy researching scriptures when i saw him lining two or three bibles i knew that gentleman was in trouble as me got the verses i went on facebook and addressed that gentleman how many times have people sent their thoughts and then you're on facebook and you see someone write something against your god and you just well when you're a rome behave like the romans do this passive non-offense christianity will not advance the kingdom are you listening to me when you write a song they edit it and they say they must take you to big brother nigeria remove this remove that remove this don't you have values say after me i have a value system everybody say it inside and outside i have a value system we are not a bunch of hopeless people waiting for the world to give us values are you listening to me we have values We have a goal that Jesus be enthroned. Be honest with me. Look up. Maybe, okay, our minds have been changed here. How many of our parents go to work because they are seeking an opportunity to let the kingdom of God come in that company? How many? When did you ever see your father and your mother get up and say, as I step into this office, Lord, salary or no salary, let your kingdom come. You will never do that when you are poor and broke. Are you listening to me we need men and women who love god more than money let me tell you something for as long as the church is not empowered enough the world will keep baiting us with offers we cannot resist they will bait you and they will make you to bow to bear and you will bow before you know it because the vicissitudes of life will strangle you you suddenly wake up and see three children saying daddy are you say where did you come from they say you are daddy <laughs> when when did all this happen suddenly you realize that it was faster than you ever thought a time will come when they will attempt to strangle i have you not heard that nations will rise against nations and kingdoms systems there will be a real clash and God is preparing you and I hope you realize that Satan will not cross his legs when he sees you being committed with the wealth of the kingdom to silence the activity of Babylon I look forward to certain people who will become real kingdom financiers that you are so blessed the next thing is the moment you hear that there is one who is singing unto the glory of God you come and say we are, we are giving you a record label you are producing we are giving you the best sound quality and we have access to all the marketers every radio station in this country must hear that he is Lord how many of us are that empowered when we start doing a five minutes talk show on NTA we celebrate it and we dance and we jump the remaining 23 hours how many minutes someone someone comes up and speaks nonsense you change channels you don't have any other channel to change so you listen and while you are not around you are busy looking for money walking till night your child is there gullible absorbing everything they are giving and then when you come back say boy what did you learn guess what it's not a memory verse he will recite to you we need to true leaders think of posterity many of us say i'm too young do you realize while you are saying oh god when will my wedding come god is uh -uh. when will the change come are you ready to change the generation you want to raise otherwise we will raise another casualty god had to intercept in our generation otherwise we would have become like our parents 
hallelujah we'll soon pray but i'm redefining the concept of ministry and the kingdom how that we need to arise and conquer cosmos no no me i'll just calm down quietly i don't want to become an international figure i don't want pride take the world give me jesus really by the grace of god we are involved in paying the school fees of many people and taking care of the welfare of many people there are a number of people in this place who have been disowned by their families on, a, on account of declaring the lordship of jesus christ over their lives and we have a bunch of believers who pray in tongues share the grace and leave those people what happens to them when they backslide and go into the world we are the first to open our mouths and say you see them they are not firm in their faith what do we think governs these people when people are hungry and there's no food the lady is crying and somebody is telling her only bow to bear you are suffering too much and when they come to us and say sorry there's i i need food to eat what happens we just say sorry uh, i wish i have something to help you with there's not much but i pray that the lord who sent me will bless you i release upon you an anointing for favor and then the lady gets up and while she's trekking from koinonia to go to her house someone intercepts and she's tired and the person says i was wondering if you would want a ride and say well it's just a ride don't you realize that satan tempts you at the point of your desperation church if we do not rise up satan will leave us preaching on pulpit and be destroying everybody a time will come when demons will sit down in churches mega churches and demons will be the members and the ministers are busy working for god they are out of alignment with his program and his system we are working building branches and satan says please keep working distract them and many people are coming because all that we focus on is membership oh we are just trying make make sure they are happy give them fun make sure they are working well if anybody complains of headache run with first aid miracle no just make it happen let them be warm and comfortable and while that is happening satan is invading our system you buy bonds before you eat it you see a writing that you must read you look at it and satan has been honored how many of you make bonds and make puff puff every time you think of putting something and say something like in christ uh do not it doesn't sound fashionable isn't it that's the problem that's exactly what i've tried to communicate our mindsets have been worked upon but if i call it if i call it um x omega donut how about that what does that mean to you with respect to the kingdom This is deliverance this is a deliverance service this night this is a deliverance service where the lord is helping us are you listening to me the greatest deliverance is that you align yourself with kingdom reality i hope as we are laughing we are getting something go ye into all the systems did he say run away go ye go ye into the media aaron and when someone comes to plan events while you talk to the person you say i was wondering um tell me your perception about life and the things of the kingdom and then you get to talk with the person i look forward to times when we are about to make to make a speech and then we speak and say now on to the king the whole world is listening to you millions of people on to the king eternal they don't like what you are saying but your competence will make room for you and while you are reading the speech people are suddenly getting healed cancers are disappearing it's not an anointed service but the kingdom is there and since the kingdom is there all the attributes of the kingdom must show forth and the moment you are speaking the prince of dubai or somebody comes to meet you and you look at him and tell him you've been having a challenge in your family what's the problem and he says how did you know say okay let's i'm inviting you over for lunch and you have the money to pay for his lunch 
then you invite him over for lunch and while you speak to him he gives you an opportunity to run a crusade see friends do you love god you must embrace his system this is the paradigm that i seek to bring for us tonight if this is your mindset then god will give you the anointing if this is your mindset then you will have the charisma and the influence do not reject the influence of the kingdom realize that god is bigger than eni say after me god is bigger than eni say god is bigger than koinonia god is even bigger than you your kingdom reigns your kingdom reigns above all above all lord your kingdom reigns your kingdom reigns above all never knew that I would be an entrepreneur outside of being a minister and God shifted my mindset when he made me know that if he makes you an entrepreneur is also ministry are you realizing there are people who I have access today not because I'm a preacher but on, a, on account of offering products and services that they need that they cannot provide how many of you have songs that are locked up in your spirit that the nations need to hear how many of you have visions how many drama ministries are quietly lying down here that have been kicked out from churches how many of you have voices that have not been received or embraced no one will want to sponsor you how many kingdom financiers are hearing the cry of the spirit how many people are sensing a call to go into the military and we are preaching them out of it how many people are sensing a call to be politicians it's not like they want money something in there is a restlessness it's an alignment of destiny i bring you a message there is a mandate upon us go ye into cosmos let there be media giants who will arise who will not only snap for koinonia but one day will stand and snap in AIT. Moguls who will be voices. I look forward to times when they will interview you. When UN will call you. When UNESCO will call you. UNESCO will call the White Dolphin Foundation. And say what solution. That's when your anointing will get into work. Your prophetic grace. Your apostolic grace. Is useless when you cannot permeate the system. useless i look forward to times when you will have why are we leaving the sheratons why are we leaving the 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 lemeridians and all of these things these are not people that are godly i look forward to times when you will have a hotel and in your hotel there's a rule no prostitutes you bring any prostitutes we kick you out of the hotel whether or not you believe it let me tell you the excellence in your hotel will force people to say no problem let's just come and when they come the only programs they can watch is cnn cbn your channel your own channel where jesus alone will be glorified i'm sharing with you a piece of my passion this is what i see my ultimate goal is not to stand on the pulpit and preach my ultimate goal is to be on the frontier of prophecy to use the apostolic grace he has given me to invade the system every one of us has a defined system arise generals go ye into that system and begin to be agents of national transformation do the masters do the phd if it will take you go go into the system gain the access and enter that system and introduce the value system make the universities build them build the secondary schools build the primary schools build the libraries go ahead and train yourself get a masters in cinematography get whatever you get buy or open a studio name it rafa studios he reigns until we are ready to invade the system this way then forget about what we call christianity
this puts you in a sense of responsibility are you following me now so when satan brings sickness you see why god will want to heal you because he knows that you are purpose your mind to be relevant you didn't learn how to cook you think god gave it to you so that your husband will appreciate you is he the only person on earth there is a mandate bigger than your husband that your restaurant becomes the best in Zaria. That you, your excellence is compelling. Many of you have come today because of the prayers and because of the excellence. Now that you are here, you can hear this. Can you receive the anointing and take this back to the system? Many of you need to go back when you're on break. Your parents have primary school. They say, come and be the principal. You have graduated before service. And you laugh and say, me, God forbid, I got first class. Are you out of your mind? Do you not realize that there is a goyi? The goyi is bigger than your personal desire. Your job was never supposed to finance your, your life. I've been criticized for years for misleading people. Let me tell you something. If all you have as your mindset is job, you will never prosper satan will keep dragging us go ye the true spirit of evangelism is beyond a three-day crusade the true spirit of evangelism is a takeover spirit it's a true evangelistic and an apostolic spirit you will not many of us just stand you just talking where you're or your all kinds of things stand near someone and be spitting saliva on him brother this and that and that i want to tell you there's a heaven i want to tell you there's a hell i want to tell you jesus is lord you are talking with the person for 10 minutes you don't know his name the person is worried with a challenge and he says brother do you know what has happened to me in this life i need you to know that i have not eaten for two days he said well i bring you a message that is greater than food i need you to know that there's an eternity but what are we saying That's why we teach you about the principles of the kingdom. Not for us to buy Lincoln Navigator. And when I drop from it, they say, man, is this the president of ENI? A young man so rich like this? To, to what end is that? Let me tell you, I've been delivered. I have been thoroughly delivered by the Spirit of God. I understand what the mandate of the kingdom is. And when you are on your heels, God will bring the members. God is tired of sending members to ministries where we punish them. And all that we do, we create an extra room inside. And then Jamfa is the one inside. This is a prophet. Then when I preach, I charge your spirit. And then you enter there. And then as you are entering, the first thing you encounter is the basket. According to your problems. Let me tell you something. There is a shift coming in our concept of church and ministry. There are many people who have turned the kings, those who are supposed to reign in life and has made them animals. You come to church, you don't know anything about the ways of God. All you know is, let's go to church. They serve communion to what end you do not know. I shall not die but live to what end I don't know. You are awakening the giant in you to go to where? We teach on prosperity with no vision. We teach on relationship with no vision. Valentine's Day is when? 14th. Many of us are warming up to be misled again for another one year until you understand that you are in, that's why I bless God like I know I, there's an announcement we'll put here. There are visionary ministries that have programs that are a subset of the kingdom. This is not a movement. This is the message. The kingdom. We are going to pray conquering cosmos i bring you a message tonight that in this season of great grace and glory you have an assignment if you open a church and only five members come for one year close it and open a business where they come to buy something start selling and preaching when they come you can go back I'm tired of people who are not moving at the at the at the things of god you sit down there how many people come to beer palace your church is near a beer palace you are seeing them coming and they are paying millions you see 70 or 90 people people are queuing finish drinking and go out now and they are waiting and you are there shouting ringing bells up and down nobody's coming to your church why don't you act it is how they come is not an issue attract them attract them there are many of you that don't believe in praying in tongues you didn't even believe in jesus christ 
the only thing you believe in, in good is good music and when you add that the worship team is good you say let me come and check out there are many of you who the reason why you came is you like a sense of you just hear that there are people inside and koinonia even has overflow you say really let's come and see it doesn't matter what brought you welcome that's the point so we use every means given to attract you and when you come the sword of the spirit is already rotating around your head and when it lands it it divides it cuts the soul the marrow everything and brings out the life in you friends there is a burden upon you that only you have been set aside to achieve and to accomplish i bring you a message we are very serious people tomorrow we are going to be having a leaders workshop we are not just thinking of how to advance e and i know this is just for the leaders in the house every ministry every true ministry must have a vision our vision is not just salvation there is something we have an impute to the body there is a unique impute that you must find that you give the body if you do not have it you don't have a ministry hallelujah so it's time for you to arise every time we talk of arise many of us we just imagine ourselves going out from a well and sitting inside a gym uh -uh. arise means wake up to your responsibility the purpose of rights is for responsibility you know your rights in christ so that you can perform your kingdom responsibility you sit down and your roommate is speaking vulgar languages you talk to, don't insult the person but you talk to the person in love and tell the person do you realize that your words have power don't just say do you know god hates talking bad you have not ministered to the person i'm stirring up the real spirit of evangelism in us this is the true spirit of evangelism by god's grace we'll be announcing some of our evangelical packages that we have but right now it's time for us to pray and we're going to pray and ask the lord to help us and grant us the grace the influence the power the anointing the understanding for there is a rebuilding of the tower of babel and the sons of jacob must arise and judge the mount of esau rise up on your feet rise up on your feet inside and outside go ahead and pray in the spirit pray in the spirit over this word that you have heard your generation will bless you go ahead and pray the entrance of thy word give it light and understanding go ahead and pray that's why you came when we call you a champion you really are a champion pray in the spirit save your salaries out of zion and they shall judge the mount of Esau. go ye into cosmos take over take over take over cosmos take over the media take over take over the pulpit take over the universities take over with the mindset that he is king he is lord this is the takeover generation Arise, O generals, go ye into cosmos, go ye into the media, 
Go ye into the business world. Go ye. Go ye. Set up the restaurants. Offer products and services that will attract many. Go to the schools. The Lord is calling the values of the kingdom. The spirit of God is not in us just to do church. Go to the embassies. Go into the political scene. He is calling. There is an anointing in the military, in the navy, in the air force. Oh, there is an anointing. Save us, shall arise out of Zion, and they shall judge the Mount of Esau. The agenda is beyond money, it's beyond marriage. Come on, pray. You are not ordinary. There is an apostolic spirit upon you. Rise up, kingdom financiers, media giants, Facebook, Twitter, to go. The Lord is calling and throne Christ. Music ministers, arise. Businessmen, arise. Scholars, doctors, professors, arise by the Spirit. Diplomats, hear the sound of the Spirit. I bring you an apostolic call that the systems of this world will come and align with the systems of our God. Rise to a point of influence. Develop yourself and value until the world cannot resist you. Come on, pray. Business apostles, business prophets, IT, IT moguls, the next Zuckerbergs, the next Steve Jobs, rise up IT giants, the next doctors, the next lawyers, the next presidents, the next governors. For the sake of his majesty, rise up. The next family life coaches. Time to arrive. Go ye into cosmos. Give them a mentality. Give them a mentality. Give them a mentality. The value of the kingdom. Of holding his majesty. Of holding his majesty. I challenge you, arise, the seed of glory is in you, the seed of greatness, you may not look like it, arise. We are the saviors, on one hand, we are praying in the spirit, on another hand, we are taking over cosmos. Pray the Spirit, generate energy, hallelujah, I know I'm not ordinary, I know I'm not ordinary, the grace of God, bringing me to a point of influence, where I will declare to the nations that Jesus is Lord. God is giving ideas. God is restoring dreams. God is putting new passions. Let the dream come alive. There is a cause to live for. There is a cause to live for. Beyond your job, there is a cause to live for. The training is worth it. The building is worth it. 
You are the light. The definition of darkness is the world without you. Arise, take over generation. Go ye into cosmos. Take over channel O. Take over MTV. Take over the internet. Take over the internet. Open websites. Open blog pages. And throw him as Lord. Open schools. Open libraries. Institutions. Baba 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 My generation will hear the voice of the King. Even in my life. My generation will hear the voice of His Majesty. Come on, pray. You are registering yourself for greatness by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Listen. There are many books lying in this place to be written that will enthrone him as Christ. You may not start writing it now. What are you developing yourself in writing? God has told you you are going to become a public figure. Although you may be in the bank now, have you let the banking job take away your mind from your focus? Hillsong titled their album for this cause. There is a cause. I tell you the truth, my mindset is not to be a preacher. My mindset is not to sit down and preach and carry a big tummy and cross my leg. And now people just keep coming for deliverance cases. When I drop the mic here, I get to work. Every one of us here, when we drop the wheel, we are doing something for the kingdom. I challenge you, servants of God, there are books to write. There are websites to open. There are blog pages to open. The trouble is many of us want a ministry where you are king of kings and lord of lords and you have many members come. So you want a secretary and a PA and all of that. There are many of us, you see, one of the mindsets, we're going to round up soon, one of the mindsets I trust that God will take out of our minds. How old is Zuckerberg? 27. 27 years old. Many of you are getting blessed from Facebook. We are streaming life to many people right now. Only God knows how many people are streaming this program. In a few weeks time, we are going to start live telecasts to people from the internet. Listen. Listen to me. If those who discovered this thing sat down and said, I'm young. Our parents have called us young. Every time we bring ideas, they say, small boy, my friend, go and concentrate in your school. Are you going to allow people to kill the vision of the spirit in you? There is nothing wrong with you writing something and taking it for people in NTA or all of these things. There is nothing wrong. Why don't you open a blog page that helps people to answer questions, spiritual questions about their lives? Must everybody know you are a ministry in that respect? Our concept of ministry must change radically. Not everybody is called into the fivefold, but everybody is called into ministry. Everybody. The condition to be ministry is that you are in the kingdom. Hallelujah. There are songs that we need to write. There are songs that we need to receive. Look beyond E and I. Look beyond Koinonia. I will cheat you if all I'm looking for is to gather people who pay allegiance to me. I'm not a demon. I've been delivered by the Spirit of God. The kingdom of God is above and beyond the personal agenda of any man. Our job is to raise, to train, to equip you, to make you leaders in your own spheres of influence. Are you listening to me? 
I leave you with a question tonight. I want you to write it as bold as you can on your notepad. Will you feel God? That's a question I have. Write it as bold as you can and meditate on it. Will you feel God? Not will we. No. Will you as a person feel God? Will you feel God? If Zuckerberg did not launch Facebook, there are many souls that have been saved through Facebook. There are many people. There are some of you, can I tell you something? There are some of you who want God to use you for ministry. You can start from somewhere. Some of you can say every week, I will order 10 messages, 10 koinonia messages. That's my job. I will package it in a CD. You mustn't say, Aaron, Aaron International Power Gospel Center. No. You can say, I'll package it and I will, I will take it to Giwa or take it to Zaria City and distribute. It may not be much. Nobody may know, but that's your own contribution. Do you realize that you are advancing the kingdom? So, the worship team, look at them. They have been standing with me for hours. Why are they standing? You know what motivates them? They are not just trying to bring a pride to Koinonia. It is the sacrifice for many of you to, to enjoy the atmosphere and receive. Is this kingdom of advancement? Of course it is. Are you listening to me? They are rehearsing every day in the week to be as competent. I mean, every time. Mondays, Fridays, I mean, Thursdays, and all of that. Are you listening to me? The members of the media, they are here moving around. You see, the concept is the kingdom. Once the kingdom is your priority, nobody will have to push you into doing some things again. You will seek an opportunity to show the Lord that you are relevant in his kingdom. Hallelujah. One last prayer point. You're going to hold the hands of your neighbor and we're going to pray as a family of faith. We're going to say, Lord, listen, although you are holding the hand of your neighbor, you're going to say, Lord, reveal my place in destiny to me. Are you listening to me? My place in destiny. I, I, I reveal my uniqueness. Where have you planted me to be relevant in your kingdom? I'm tired of escorting people from pillar to post. Lift up your voice and pray. Reveal my place in destiny. Go ahead and pray. Oh God, a revelation. You may be serving in Koinonia now, but your life is bigger. Grant me a revelation of my place in life and destiny. Go ahead and pray. Reko prese ke pariada bash. Reng doso so pete ke dosh. Reveal my place in destiny. I don't want to be busy here and there doing nothing. Let my assignment occupy me. Let me prepare for it. Reveal my place in destiny. Your place is not church. Your place in the system, not in Koinonia. There is a role you have to play beyond church in the system. In the system, you have a role to play. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I challenge you. Please don't feel God. We must train ourselves to a point where your Christianity is not just on Sundays. It is an ideology. Are you listening to me? Don't forget what you have learned tonight. That the kingdom life is an ideology. is a mindset. It's a value system. That's what I'm doing to you. It's a, it's a mindset. It's an alignment. So that you begin to think kingdom. 
the agenda of God. Can I tell you something? When you begin to think that, you become immortal until your assignment is completed. You know why? Because you have aligned yourself so much. God would rather a nation perish for your sake. And then your evangelism will be effective. Because when you get people born again, you follow them up. You don't follow them up by telling them in our church, this is what we do. That's not follow up. That's indoctrination. Follow up is to introduce them to the kingdom life. And teach them the basic principles of the kingdom. I trust that God will cause us to be matured by the Spirit. Hallelujah. One of our activities this year is to engage everybody. Are you listening to me? I will put fire in your bones until you are meaningfully engaged. Either training yourself. There's no idleness this year. Are you listening to me? You are either training yourself or you are doing something for the kingdom. We have different activities. You are training yourself. So you are reading a book or you are writing something or you are resting or you are meditating. There's no idleness. You now begin to value your time. When God tells you you have two years to manifest and he tells you the things you must do within that two years, your enemy is the person who comes to distract you and waste your time. Are you listening to me? Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for teaching us. Creating a responsibility in our hearts to invade the world system. Creating an urgency in our hearts that there is a rebuilding of the Tower of Babel. And that the sons of Jacob must arise and judge the Mount of Israel. Father, let the seed of the word of God that has been sown tonight prosper. Let it prosper in our hearts. Hallelujah. When you go back to your rooms, teach others. Are you listening to me? You mustn't call it a Bible study. When you go to your, teach others. Go back home and teach others. This is the year you engage yourself. Hallelujah. Very quickly, if you're worshiping with us for the first time tonight, I'd like you to leave your seat very quickly. Please leave your seat and come. We love you and we want to acknowledge your presence. Appreciate them as they come inside and outside. First timers. Quickly, please appreciate them. They are coming. First timers. Inside and outside. We love you. Keep clapping. They are coming. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate every one of them. We love you. We value you. You are special. You mean a lot to us. Please just keep coming. Just keep coming. Just just direct them the space for you. Keep clapping inside and outside. I appreciate them. Great men and women of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for making our time to worship with us. I hope you were blessed. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for you that the Lord will bless you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share it to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul. Spirit, we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from, and if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially, and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.